Hello and welcome to the Game Informer Show. I am your host, Ben Hansen. I am joined, as always, by my permanent co-host, Tim Turry, over there. Oh my gosh. Hello, Ben Hansen. Oh, this is going and still. Hello, everyone, for, for joining us. No, this right. is just me. I'm excited to be here and talking about video games. Yeah, Tim has a new personality for each podcast. But just for the intro, though. That's right. Yeah. We're also joined by returning champion, Kimberly Wallace. Hello. To talk about all Dronino Cooney needs. And then we're also joined by <laughs> Matthew Cotto for the first time on the Rebooted Podcast Hello. thing. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming down, man. Yeah, it's great to be here. I'm excited to have you in a long form at uh, Kato. We've never really done this with you before. I actually dissolve into dust after about <laughs> 20 minutes. So <laughs> That's right. I'll go as long as I can, but you're not yeah. going to get we have a dust pan. from me. We're ready. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're fully prepared for this, And Kato. we'll just raise the dustpan up to the microphone. So for this episode, uh, we are focusing on E3 2015. We are only a couple days away from this show really kicking off. And Can't so believe it. It's really going to be nuts. So we're going to talk a little bit about kind of the games that are going to be at E3 that we've already gotten a look at, some of the biggest games on the horizon this year and next. Uh, then we are doing an email section, and then the second segment is going to be more focused on E3 predictions, running through the different companies, what we want to see, what we don't want to see, um, and also the emails are E3-themed. Uh, yeah, there was a few that were... We got a few good emails about E3, like questions what we want to look what we want to see even just like the e3 in a broader context and sure there's some regular kind of goofy emails in there as well so all right cool sounds good mm -hmm. to kick things off though on tuesday we announced our cover story for july which is halo 5 guardians mm. <laughs> you excited about that uh, none of us were on that cover story <laughs> <trip>. <laughs> i know but like, i talked to brian a little bit just to kind of promote what we have coming up throughout the month and so in the cover story that you can read uh, through the digital issue if you're a subscriber to the magazine or whatever. Like we talk about what the crew that went to 343 actually played. Like Wade was the video guy. I didn't go on this trip, but it was Wade and Brian and Reeves, mm -hmm. I believe. Uh, but they actually got to play a part of the campaign as Master Chief and they played co-op. They got to play some multiplayer with a new map. Oh, cool. Uh, and they got a ton of information about like the fire teams and how that whole thing's breaking down. So I guess they got to play more multiplayer, right? Because that was right. Out, uh, that was that an alpha that was out before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a really rough alpha. Well, mm -hmm. not rough, but an early look at Halo Five. Yeah. And also, just a weird plug. They did this video series called The Sprint. Uh, that three, was, four, three did. Yeah, yeah. That was put on like Halo Waypoint. It was all about building that alpha. It is a really, really good look. Uh, it's some of the most transparent videos related to the games I've seen, mm -hmm. especially from like a major publisher like Microsoft. It's really impressive stuff that they're oh, willing cool. to show. Uh, so you can check it out if you're a fan. Or else, stay tuned to Gameformer's site throughout the month. We're going to be rolling out a bunch of features every single week, uh, video interviews with the team, the new creative director, Tim Longo. I'm excited to hear him talk about the game and stuff like that. Sweet. But that's Halo 5. We're not going to focus too much on Halo 5 for this specific podcast. Kim, we want to talk to you. Oh, gosh, here we go. Because, All right. uh, what was it, two weeks ago now? God, it's so long ago now that it feels so long ago. But, yeah, I think it's about two weeks ago. Yeah. The, the old Judges Week where they, you know, cart you out there and check, show you, like, it's usually the biggest stuff, right? I mean. Usually, yeah, you would think that. Um, so you went out to Santa LA, Monica. Santa Monica and got a look at some of the games that are going to be big at E3 just so you could prepare stories in the lead up to E3? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Just to get people, you know, excited about what's to come. I sure. Suppose. It that is really an intense those judges weekdays are My freaking God. intense. They're, they're packed. Yeah, you're like you see a game for like 3 hours, then you're off to the next one for 3 like I would wake up like at 9, 10 and Cold then sweats. go. No, I'd have to go all the way <laughs> to like 9 o'clock at night and, and I'd get back and I'd be like, gosh, I have to do it all over again. And, and, and rarely are they, you know, there's not a lot of throwaway previews in there. Like it's dense with like, I remember just going from zero to 60 on seeing Dying Light for the first time. It's like sure. going from not knowing anything about it to mm -hmm. knowing everything about it or first hands on with like Thief or something like that. Uh, yeah. That was the E3 Judges Week I went there to. Really wasn't too many surprises this year, though. Yeah. I think uh, a lot of companies kind of want to keep some stuff hidden and okay. weren't showing, like, I would say, not even their best of the best stuff that they have to come. You know, they don't want to spoil any announcements, obviously. Sure. So, like, you got to play stuff like Arkham Knight, but they're still saving some new details about Arkham Knight 43, stuff like that. Well, it's going to be out soon, so it, I don't that know how much... That was a bad example, yeah, yeah. that was a really bad example. Um, <laughs> ben, you should feel well, bad. Well, you know, All to right. be honest with you, I played um, Mad Max, and sure. I know we had their cover story for that, yeah. and I felt like I got kind of the same taste of the game that you did. And, really? Like, I went to read your preview after I finished mine, I was like, oh, we had very similar impressions like of it. Like you did the same stuff, you feel like? Yeah, I was like, but 
that's what the the demo was. Most people didn't get to play it like we did, and so sure. do you want to just mean, run through Mad Max in particular? Like, yeah, what you, yeah. Hear, hear what you thought. I was yeah, I was interesting. Uh, I didn't know what to expect. I had read like your piece when you did it way back, and I know you're really excited about it. Reiner's really excited about it. Yeah. Um, Andy has his doubts about it. Yeah, I'm somewhere in between, I yeah. think. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's how I f am in between as well after playing it. Um, I thought it was, I love that they're taking the Batman combat, kind of. Like it what feels a novel very, concept. Yeah. Well, you know, if you're going to steal from one, like that freaking combat system is fun. Yeah. So I was perfectly fine with that. I liked getting out. But then, like I said, I usually, and this will also come up in Batman, I'm horrible at driving in video games i will go on huh. and, and in real life too i'm not a good driver so, i've never uh, seen it happen so. yeah so uh it i was concerned about driving this vehicle and the whole uh -huh. thing just that you have is you're kind of you're leveling up max's car the whole time it's um, a lot like, of customization yeah a lot of customization and... you do you find scrap all around which like for the collector the people who love to collect i mean that's what you'll do and mm -hmm find ways to make it you know you can change the color you can customize it for kind of what you're going to focus on on your play style which is which is cool um yeah you want to keep the armor light and get away faster or do you want to be heavier and ram into mm -hmm. people and it'll affect well, handling. i like the ramming to be it's honest very sad i also like the harpoon you can launch a harpoon yeah. and like Shh. that's the exciting thing about this game to me is the feeling of oh it's kind of open world twisted metal yeah. That seems awesome. Yeah. I'm super yeah. into that idea. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I was worried about all the car stuff, and I ended up falling in love with it. Did like, you... it is really smooth and just fun. I mean, you take like you have tire shredders, and you just go up mm -hmm. against next to the guys. Oh yeah, like the Ben Hur style. Yeah. I love that. And it's all like physics based. You can like rip the enemy cars apart one piece at a time. And yeah, really yeah. That was most fun is just being able to like harpoon it. And psh, it's so cool. Did yeah. you? Did you guys? All, have we all seen Fury Road yet? Have we had time for that? I yet? haven't seen it no. yet. Did I really. I'm really curious to see whether that's going to hurt or help the Mad Max game because mm -hmm. Fury, right. Fury Road, like I have not, especially an action movie, I have not seen such, you know, feverish excitement for something. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering whether that's going to translate mm -hmm. over to Mad Max and get people excited or it's going to be so, you know, people's associated feelings with Mad Max is going to be so high that it can't live up to the grand spectacle mm -hmm. that is Fury Road. I'm really right. curious. Oh, I want that minimalist storytelling of Fury Road, the movie, and right. Mad Max games. Like, you're not going to have it. There's going to be cutscenes in this game. I'm sorry. Well, yeah. You're not going to have a Furiosa skin, which is really a bummer. Yeah. Did this? Did you see that after Fury Road came out? I'm curious, like, in the way they were speaking about it, if it changed at all. Because when we were there on the cover story trip, mm -hmm. like, it didn't seem like they knew much about Fury Road at all, and they mm -hmm. weren't really that connected. Mm -hmm. uh, it had cut. I saw it the week that it had come out that Sunday, and I think okay. I saw the game on, like, a Monday. Okay, so. but they weren't like, hey, you know, Gas yeah. Town in this game, that's yeah, the one no, from the movie no, or anything no, like that? No, no, they didn't do anything like huh. that. They didn't use okay. it to... Uh, hmm. But I was, like I said, pleasantly surprised by it. Um, the only thing that really made me a little concerned was we got I got to, like, take a look at the map and, like, the different activities you can do. So you can go sure. and collect scrap. You can... Um, run up and there's these car missions that they have i can't think of the name of it right now where you actually have to like hunt down a bunch of cars yeah and, like, like collect them kind of yeah oh, and yeah. then you get like this big hood ornament to put on your car by doing them which also customizes wait is your that car the car taking down the convoys yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. oh it is yeah, okay. yeah. the, the, the convoys yeah. yeah so you do that and then the other thing is like going into like an enemy like hideout and mm -hmm you know, breaking that down. And those right. were the three types of mission. And I looked on the map to see if there's anything else. And that was all that was on the map. Mm. And I got a little concerned that doing those were fun in a short preview. Right. But if that's like, so I, I, my thing is like the story better be pretty damn good and engaging. Yeah, because yeah. that'll be the tricky thing. Yeah. Because if it, <laughs> you think about Shadow of Mordor and Shadow yeah. of Mordor, I think got away with having a really limited pool of mm -hmm. recurring types of missions like kill mm -hmm. people with the sword mm -hmm. kill people with the bow stealth kills uh but the rate the reason they got away with that was because of the nemesis system yeah exactly so if mad max is like car combat and stuff ends up being satisfying enough to carry those really limited mm -hmm. varieties right. we'll, we'll see i don't know yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a little bit skeptical of their storytelling abilities mm -hmm. uh i mean it is the story team from just cause 2 over oh, there okay. like we even had like the creative director and the actual writer on this podcast for the special edition a couple mm -hmm. of weeks ago. It's so not to bash him too much, but I don't think <laughs> Avalanche is really strong in the storytelling and open mm -hmm. world department. But maybe this is their opportunity to shine. I don't know. It, it certainly could be. From like the cutscenes we saw on the cover story trip, I wasn't too optimistic that mm -hmm. that's really going to be the part that grabs me. 
and like the overall open world i don't think i'm too excited mm. well, about like anything on foot mm-hmm. just kind of like it seems okay well yeah if the campaign has you doing awesome things with the action i think then it can be fine sure but you know what kind of type of missions am i doing for the campaign and are those fun and satisfying right. how much do i really have to go into the side content if i get bored of it i mean they're just like when you have these demos you can't you're never going to be able to answer that so right, right. that's the heart that was my one reservation that i had when sure. playing it so. what about uh since it's so closely related and from the same publisher what about arkham knight what'd you say yeah let's talk about that thing <laughs> uh so i was a big dork when i played batman and the first Cosplay? thing that no oh. the first thing that i did was just like the world is like at least it's five times bigger than arkham knight Okay. And you treated it like gone home. You like walked Batman down the street. Wait, looking no. the windows. Well, so wait, is it? It's five times bigger than Arkham. Is it? Are they comparing no. it to city Cities. or origins? Sorry, city. city, city. No, I was, I was just curious. Whether... I'm talking about Arkham Knight okay, now. All right. I, I messed up. No, no, no. Also, I was just curious yeah. if there was because is Arkham City bigger than Arkham Origins? Like, I'm, you know, yeah. the different developers. I think well, Rock City is pretty it, specific yeah. about like not really lumping in Origins into it's not their, their yeah. not their <laughs> game. They call it the trilogy, right? Yeah. And we got them to talk a little about their thoughts on origins which i have a story up uh, when we did that cover story back in the day um but yeah i think they would only compare it to city okay yeah, it was okay. To city um but it's just the verticality of this world and how massive it just is in front of you all i wanted to do was just use my grapple hook and just go choo, 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 right. like everywhere and so that's what i did when i sat down to my demo for the first time because i was just like Every time I thought I reached the highest point, there's just like another point above me that I didn't right. see. And I just like, I loved it. Uh, Miss Wallace, this is Batman, not Spider-Man, if we could get the progress moving here. Oh, you're you're saying because... I'm role-playing as PR. Oh, okay, uh, gotcha. Well, oh, okay. you fly, you fly. The flying's fun. That's I cool. like gliding through the air, too. So did you have like story missions then that you were... Uh, so what they were doing was showing us some of the side stuff in the world. <laughs> um, very huh. much, yeah. Mad Max and Batman had this weird, like, synergy going with what they wanted to show. But uh, so I saw the racing, which is Riddler races that you can do. And are those all in the sewers? Because the one we saw on the cover story trip mm-hmm. is him going through the yeah, sewers. Yeah, yeah. So he basically, you know is taunting you and he changes this course as you go on and you have to press buttons at the right time to avoid the obstacles and do like these crazy insane jumps and you know take the batmobile on the side of the which i was right. horrible do you at. feel like really does it feel like a racing game like yeah that part? yeah because you got the boosts and everything that but make it's it like fun a, and, it's yeah. like a time racing it's a time thing. it's yes, not like riddler on a motorcycle yeah. next year no he's not racing you okay. you have to just make it through this course sorry uh, in a lot in mount the of riddler time. is on top of the bo- the batmobile fixing the engine as it starts on fire <laughs> like chum bucket and mad right. max Perfect. So did you go through any of the other forms of the Batmobile when you were like racing with, like, with the, like, tank. the tank or anything like oh, that? Oh, yeah, I got to do, uh, there's the tank missions that you could do, which were more fun than I thought it was going to be, to be okay. honest. You just like strafe away and try to like just throw uh, missiles at <laughs> your enemy. So it's kind of like a hover tank, is that right? That's the way it controls, like there's yeah. weird strafing in a yeah, tank? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which I, I thought I wasn't going to like, and I actually had a lot of fun with it. You can get really strategic yeah. with everything, so... You know, one of the questions I had was, you know, you talked about the Riddler races mm-hmm. and those are obviously races, but with your ability to sort of call in the Batmobile mm-hmm. at various times, you know, how much are players actually going to be able to use that, you know, when they want versus only like certain times? No, you can call the Batmobile in anytime you want. Um, I actually had a mission that I did. Uh, I was breaking into like the Penguins, like weapon hideout where you just are supposed to like he has weapon caches all around that you're supposed to hit and blow up and when i first got there if i went through the i was sneaking i saw there's this guy with the gun so if i would have went straight there he would have shot me dead so what i did was i called in the batmobile and i used the batmobile as like protection and shot at him from the batmobile because i put it right in line in front now when of you're him. shooting from the batmobile what what kind of bullets are we firing here since it is batman like a little sandbag did they ever address that like is yeah, batman just I, murdering everybody i don't know everybody? i didn't uh, that never even crossed i'm my sure mind. they're like sandbags I think, and... I think that's yeah it's some yeah. sort of like stun projectile or something rubber bullets yeah, yeah, yeah. Like rubber explosions that. and uh, missiles yeah. uh kato do you were you a big fan of rocksteady's batman games you like those like, yeah you... i like them i i can't say i'm like the series is biggest fan yeah or, but i definitely appreciate them and like them yeah i'm the same way but i'm curious if the idea of like cruising around gotham and you know since you're a racing game fan if that kind of ratchets up your excitement for it in any way or if that's not the um, thing you're looking for from it yeah i would say that i don't necessarily think hmm. that it's uh what i'm looking for but you know as 
kind of I was alluding to a little mm -hmm. bit to my question as far as how they're going to get the balance right and stuff. Because yeah. mm -hmm. it seems like it would be a pretty all-powerful weapon at your disposal. But, you know. Yeah, you can't take it into some of the missions. Like It just comes through the front door. Well, yeah, like I said, like the, I <laughs> couldn't here. take yeah. the Batmobile <laughs> into the actual hideout, but I could use it outside of the hideout to shoot guys ahead I, of time. I wish it could be like Streets of Rage. I don't know if you remember that, where you'd hit the special button, and you'd even be inside, like, have, like an interior fight, and then it would just cut down to the street, and a cop car would show up. A guy with an RPG would come out and like shoot it, and it would just magically affect everybody in the building. Perfect. I want it to and, be like that. And I'll be honest, like I still think playing Batman, cruising around the Batmobile to get around the city, you can certainly do that, but that's not the way to explore a Batman game. You want to yeah. be flying yeah. through the air, and just like I said, as I was grapple little hook up everywhere that I could, and well, just yeah. did you feel <laughs> I, my biggest? Comp my biggest criticism of the of the Arkham games is mm -hmm. I, I like the look, I like this the tone of the story, mm -hmm. I like the crafted missions and we're working through like interiors and stuff. Mm -hmm. But ever since Arkham City, I have never felt compelled to explore the world and like dig into those side missions. I've just felt you mean ever since Arkham City, like in Arkham City, even you weren't that yeah in Arkham mm -hmm. City and Origins. Sure. I I mm -hmm. never was like oh I gotta you know even a game like infamous or or shadow of mordor i just mm -hmm. felt compelled to go and do all the little side missions but batman it just does not happen i don't know yeah. if you feel like this one has stronger side missions than some of the previous ones or if you're optimistic um i felt like they're pretty much on par with what we've seen a bit yeah. i really like the murder investigations that you can do yeah. they oh they kept like, those those are yeah, from yeah. Kind, yeah. Of story, they, kind of story integration yeah, yeah it's it's very cool that you can just and it's not just you scan one part of a body like you have to go through muscles uh like organs tissues like all this stuff just to find right. out how someone died and like it's really i did one in like it, they don't end up the way that you think they would either, which I kind of like because you're kind of un slowly unraveling. But it's like not, a mini CSI. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I like it. Except at least in Origins, they weren't. They didn't feel like adventure game puzzles or anything like that. Like it was pretty much autopilot. Like you're just scrubbing through, and it, there wasn't anything kind oh, of. Oh no, this is you actually it. scanning. Um, so it, it does feel like a little bit more. Of yeah, a, puzzle a little then? more. A little more, but. Okay. You're because you have to just find certain points on the body and make sure. And if you're not, they're not always right in your face to either. Like there's be hidden something hidden behind an ear, and you have to discover it. Sure. But it's I don't know. I like those a lot. I was like, I'm glad they brought this in. And yeah, cool. It sounded I, cool. Um, I'm, I'm excited trying, that game's coming out at the end of July. It's gonna be a fun summer game. Like not much is coming out around it. We can all just focus. That's perfect timing actually for something like yeah. It, you we'll know? be like one fifth of the way through Witcher Three at that point. We can that. really soak our teeth. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Um, Cool. What is the yep. next coolest thing you saw at pre 3 Oh, gosh. I actually had a lot of fun. Um, there was an indie night, and I saw the game What Remains of Edith Finch, and I had a blast with it. Uh, that's by... The name says it all. Yeah, let's yeah. just say What Remains is a party. What <laughs> Remains, okay. It, it's creepy, the game, but I like it for that. Um, you're basically... It's by the people who did Unfinished Swan. Okay, the black and white painting game? Yes, yes, okay. yes. Uh, and you're basically in this one, it's gonna sound like Gone Home. They're like, we we had this idea before Gone Home came <laughs> oh, out. They and took it just that like a huh? kill. Yeah, well, you're exploring a house, but what you're trying to do is find <laughs> out like what this woman, this girl's, her whole family has died off in like really bizarre and tragic ways. So you're uh -huh. exploring the house and she's the last remaining like, in her lineage so she's trying to figure out if, she, if by investigating how all her family members died if she can figure out like a trend to it but why you will like this game ben Ooh, hansen yeah. is because it's very twilight zone influence what yeah My favorite show yeah and like jeff cork heard that and he's like yeah i just saw the trailer for that and then i i heard you talking about it and now i gotta play it so, so is, it, is it being so? dubbed S what <laughs> is it black and white oh does it have the RS in there, little Rod Serling? No, it's not black and white. Uh, okay. But anyways, <laughs> cool. it's a first-person exploration game, uh -huh. and in my freaking playthrough, I was I turned into a little girl, um, and so even like your height perspective just changes oh, with cool. it, and it's really cool. And she's just like has the cutest little voice, and then all of a sudden she's like super super hungry and can't stop eating everything in front of her. So she's eating like toothpaste and like just these You're controlling plastic her? berries. 
Yeah. Like, you're out of control when she's you're, doing this? You're controlling but, her, but I mean, like, you're supposed to, Did you to, make like, her eat the toothpaste? Yes. Okay. Oh, so you say she. Were you just hungry for toothpaste? <laughs> well, I mean, you go her? and you look around, and she's like, mm. Were the developers trying to pry the controller out of your hand at this point? <laughs> well, it gets wet. And then but it was I, in your mouth? But then, obviously, it's, like, some sort of dream sequence, because then okay. she turns into a cat. And so then you're a cat cool. chasing a uh-huh. bird. Then you turn into the bird and fly. And then you turn into a shark. And then you're just eating all these people. That sounds awesome. And you turn into like a Cthulhu like Uh monster and you're like slithering and like going up against humans and just. What the hell are you talking about? So it's a Cthulhu trying to understand. And then it's just like where it ends up in the end is just so messed up and chilling. And I'm not going to spoil it, but I'm just saying that was just one little story from it. So they're all going to be bizarre like that where you. And I liked it because at one point, like I said, I was swimming in the sea and the next i'm flying through the air and i'm trying but i'm trying to eat all these doing that (laughs) eat all these different animals and people in vicious ways which made me feel bad about myself that sounds expansive for an indie game like trying to nail all those different types of navigation but it worked and it was like it was so smooth i mean like i had a blast with it hearing you describe it you sound like an insane person but i'm excited for it hang on i still have a million questions oh my gosh here we go what so they're broken up into different little not, yeah, you it's would, not episodic, but like the little essentially chapters. Essentially, you'll explore a room. Everybody has a room in the house, and you'll uh-huh. find like a place to find their diary or find an object that represents them. And then you'll go into their story thing. So there's no like okay. linear path per se. And that's like, the Twilight Zone thing. Is there all like different episodes of Twilight Zone? Is that the and they're all analogy? Weird. Okay. <laughs> I mean, oh, it's a I think you're trying thing. to lock it in too much. There, <laughs> I think it's a thematic <laughs> thing. Well, all right. This is okay. all that remains of Edith Finch. Yes. What oh, remains? remains? What of Edith Finch? Remains? Interesting. And then at the indie thing, you also saw what Tam Wadham, which yes. I'm super excited is the creator of. Uh, Katamari yes. Damacy. How do you pronounce? How do you spell that? W a t t a m. Yes, oh. Tom. Yeah, what okay. Tom? So, what the hell is that game? I wish I had a way to explain it. Oh, it's not as easy it as the last so... one. It's, All right, well, okay. let's move on to Fortnite then. No, it, oh. it's so crazy that I mean, we were in a room full of journalists. So this is being demoed to us, and like everybody is just like laughing because it's so what you would expect from the creative absurd. Katamari. Yeah, it's so absurd, but then at the same time, it's like you start this game and you're a mayor and you can hold hands with a cloud. And then all, all of right. a sudden you're going through and there's this world. And what you have to do is by having fun, you like attract more people into your world. And then you blow, you can stack the people and uh-huh, then you this... can blow them up. <laughs> okay. And then that's supposed to be like, yeah, we're having a lot of fun, but you can like mow the lawn, uh, sing songs is like, it gonna be it's building just, this world up basically it seems a little noby noby boy esque yes okay so not really directed okay. just weird quirky sandbox yes is and that... so it was very hard for me to try to explain this game because i still don't even know what what it is that i right. saw but it like gets you like it entrances you in a weird way sure, yeah, yeah. It's the, like those games are good this like is that. just so weird and bizarre but i've got to see what happens next like mm-hmm. all of a sudden like one of the characters is like making golden poop and i don't know what's going oh, on in this nice. game and i mean there's just there's stuff that's, like that that's I what mean, i'm into actually so that's I, I knew it i knew that would yeah, sell you yeah hey can we uh cleanse our souls of watam <laughs> by talking to matthew Cotto about his trip before Look, we get back to kim that. for yeah. rounding this thing out yeah go for it uh Cotto fell asleep 13 minutes ago no <laughs> Uh, you, huh? Mr. Cotto, saw Metal Gear Solid Five in L.A. I did, yes. Was when great. was this? Um, I think this was right before Kim's trip, so this was probably three weeks ago. I mean, okay. you know, I don't know what that is in dog ears, but it's a long time. Did right. you go to Konami, L.A.? Is that what it would be called? No longer Kojima. Did they have like Ko- spray paint out the word Kojima they at this still headquarters? They have his tree there, by the way. Mm. His tree? They yeah, haven't... he like planted this tree. Oh, I didn't know that one. Really? Yeah. They didn't chop it down? No, it's still there with his name on it because I, I saw it at the same... I got to see Metal Gear as well what? on my trip, and so I Everything saw it goes there through too. Kim, actually. Wait a minute. So, Kim, did you go to the same studio then? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Kato, first let's talk about what you he saw. He saw way more than I did okay. go with him on this. I... Walk us through this trip. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, it was at Konami LA. Right. And uh, it's the a plane ride really, was okay. nice, really nice place, actually, yeah. Um, and it was two days of playing the game pretty much in- uninterrupted. So we wow. would get there er- relatively early in the morning, you know, have breakfast or whatever, and then just get straight down to playing the game. It just so, sounds like a dream. Um, I yeah, I mean, you know, as I was going to say, actually, about the pre, the 
the judges thing, one of the great things about that also is just getting to play an E3 game that's, you know, for a full hour or whatever it is. And not being is, on a crowded show floor yeah, to and, do right. it. and everything like that. So that that this, you know, above and beyond that was a, was a pretty rare gift. What so, was the timeline yeah. on that? Like, what was going on with the Kojima stuff around that time? Was this slightly before or right no, after? No, it was, a, it was right, in the, right after, you know, sort of, sort of in the middle of it. And, um, he wasn't you know, there, right? Yeah, he wasn't there. He's you know, usually at everything that he demos whenever yeah, they do think that. So. Well, not, yeah, none of the Japanese team were there. It was mm-hmm. pretty much just all the local local guys and stuff and you know kind of to the to their credit and sort of to focus on the game they didn't you know weren't going to address any of that which, did they come out and say that ahead of time yeah. like don't bother asking we're not talking about it well you know it was it was just kind of like you know we're here to see the game and you know well we don't have anything to add to you know a lot of the questions you have we understand that you know they were you know very polite about it but it was mm-hmm. basically like you know we don't we can't really tell you anything so right let's not waste time you know we're not gonna have a q and a q and a about sure you know pt or silent hills or anything like that we're just here for the game so let's just right talk about the game they're you know very open about the game and stuff yeah, but they yeah. just didn't weren't gonna go into so all that other stuff with the game were you starting from the beginning then yep from very like opening title sequence the entire thing yep just did, like start game did you get a sense of how did you play ground zeros yep did you get a sense of how it's gonna like flow into it like just from like the start screen or anything or um you know i I can't go into story stuff but you know i certainly would say that you know you're gonna want to play ground zeros you're gonna want to um you know ground zeros is obviously tied to peace walker as well so you know, you don't have to play Peace Walker necessarily, but, you know, maybe if you're playing Ground Zeroes, going into some of those menus and taking a little, getting right. some understanding of the backstory. Okay. Or actually, truth be told, uh-huh. it's probably better just going to the internet because, you know, some of the, yeah. the menu stuff can get a little yeah. convoluted. I think at, least, but. at least Ground Zeroes is free right now on PlayStation. Plus. Yeah, that's true. It's pretty yeah, crazy. Yeah, go grab it. I would definitely mm-hmm. recommend, too, there's like a YouTube cut of all of Peace Walker's cutscenes and kind of like all the gameplay stuff. It's like yeah. three hours. Like, if you want to get fully prepared for phantom pain just watch that three-hour cut get some pizza get drink some, some coke pizza. pizza walker yeah that's right and then just play ground zeros for an hour or whatever through the free playstation plus thing right now which is great and then you are going to be so good to go yeah uh, actually you know what the best thing is is it's Ooh. tim's cover story timeline Ooh. which distills down into i want to say what 20 points the absolutely essentials because you know a lot of the things with those you think those held true yeah, I think okay, so. Cool. You know, a lot of those online synopsises, they talk about stuff that is just kind of getting lost in the weeds. Mm-hmm. Okay, you know, right. Details that maybe you don't really need to know. But, right. Mm-hmm. So, Tim, you did a great job. Hey, thanks, Kato. Yeah, yeah. cool. Tim. So, this is really nitty-gritty, but we're Metal Gear fans here. Did you see the title sequence? Because, like, the title, the opening sequences for Metal Gear is, like, I consider them, like, Bond opening things. Uh, opening sequences. Like, did you see a cool, elaborate musical title sequence or anything like that? Uh, I don't believe that was in. Okay. I think, you know, like I did say start the game, but, you know, I would say that there's certain things in there that lead to me, me to, lead me to believe that maybe it was... Distorted? Yeah, I just, I think there mm-hmm. was maybe things, you know, just sort of taken out or, or sort sure. of to speed me on to, like, let's go play the game. But the game right. as I played it was, you know... Well, let's get complete. to the really important things. Did a gunshot fire when you hit the new game <laughs> option in the menu? Was it the classic... Oh Jeez, gosh. I don't remember. I <laughs> took a, a lot of notes. It's a very right specific Metal notes. Gear Holy thing God. where you yeah. where you hit the start game. Oh, I know. And, yeah, I, yeah, you I know. know. Okay, okay. Uh, but let's tell us right from the beginning. What do you geez. see? Okay, so that is like never coming on again. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, like I said, I can't go into the story. That stuff's under um, because NDA. you don't want to spoil it, or it's no, an NDA. It's I think yeah, literally a, a sniper would pop up, and I think I'd, I'd, oh, okay. I'd get taken out immediately. What yeah. would the sniper be wearing? I wouldn't see. I would be dead probably right before <laughs> right. I was able to, to see any of that. But, you know, a lot of people are asking, you know, did I play in the whole hospital thing? I have played that. And it's pretty um, similar to what we saw in that video a while back? Um, the things in that video, that, that video is true. Uh, there's other things. You sure. Know, Can I you say, like, how about. long that sequence is? Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a decent amount. Okay. You know? Yeah. Interesting. Um <laughs> So, Kado, can you, can you talk about <laughs> after the hospital? Yeah, so, you know, the the main part of my experience was uh, in Afghanistan, which then gets to all, the, like, the building mother base and sort of the, you know, I even hate to use the word open world because I think it's 
a lot of people are very fixated on that world right. and that mm-hmm. word because it you know recalls Witcher Three, it mm-hmm. calls GTA, and you know all that sort of you know Dragon Age, mm-hmm. and you know it's a big world with a lot of different missions and different locations and different bases and stuff. Uh, in Afghanistan, which is where I'm playing. There's also Africa. Um, did but you play a little bit of Africa too? I did not. I okay. think some of the people had just gotten gotten there, you know, past me, but I just okay. wasn't there. So, so there's a good it was deal go of content in Afghanistan then. Yeah, there's a good deal of that. And roughly judging, you know, when I talked to someone from Konami, it sounded like where I was at was, you know, maybe around a third of the game. Okay. So, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So what surprised you about your time with the game? Uh, I really loved... Um, building out Mother Base. And part of that kind of speaking to some of the open world sort of things is where certainly you can go on missions, but whatever you're doing, wherever you are, kind of feeds into Mother Base in the sense that you're talking about picking up resources. So just going by and collecting stuff, you know, uh, knocking soldiers out and mm-hmm. having them, you know, the f- oh back, God, ballooned yes. back to your base. And then, you know, all the things that how that leads to how your base builds up. And even also the stats that, at the end of a mission like so you don't have to necessarily directly take you take missions on but you're just out in the open world so you can go do side missions you can go waste time by doing whatever you want and then go do the mission so even at the end of the mission screen you have stats and those how you do in there feeds into kind of like a heroic kind of uh grade or or sure. okay. you know sort of status and that feeds into mother base as well so okay it's, it's well, really nice where how many you get that feeling if you're really building it up, and of course that ties into story and all that kind of stuff. That, huh. that was on a gameplay level from Peace Walker. That was the most satisfying part of it was taking guards, knocking them out, and just having tying a balloon to them and having them just disappear and uh, <laughs> then reappear in Mother Base. Obviously, it right. seems like you can take everything, including the kitchen sink, this time around and see it like physically represented in Mother Base, which mm-hmm. is awesome. Did you get the goat? Oh uh, yeah, I got sh- there's sheep. There's plenty of sheep going running around. Um, is there a limit to that? Can you just keep capturing sheep and just have your entire mother base covered with so sheep? So good. Well, there's actually a wing that. So once you sort of, as your mother base progresses, they get like different wings. So okay. one's like a medic wing. One's like a considered a brig. Which my impression is maybe not all the soldiers that you might Fulton back might be 100% cooperative. You know, of just joining mm-hmm. your cause. So you sure. might have to put them in the brig. Um, and then one of them is called like an anim- animal preservation wing. Okay. And so I actually, you go back and you can visit the base and you can see it. I didn't go to the actual wing because you'll take like a Jeep. You can get in a Jeep and just drive around, you know, talk to guys and stuff. Hmm. I didn't see the actual wing, but it, it is there. And That's so cool. I, so I'm not, I don't think there's really a limit. I wouldn't think there's a, like a limit okay. for sheep. The other part I was <laughs> going to ask about that was you mentioned like mission results screens and stuff like that. Is that just something that pops up? Like, are you taken out of the game when you finish a mission and then put somewhere else? Or, or does, it, does the game just continue going? You'll get a mission results screen, and then once that goes away, you're just still right where you finished that last mission? Uh, yes. So let's say if it was, you know, I'm just being totally random here, but let's say you rescue a hostage, okay. you know, mm-hmm. you would have to extract that hostage back, you know, so you call in your helicopter, it comes into the, uh, you know, landing zone, wherever you are, pretty mm-hmm. much, and then you, you know, put the hostage in and it goes away and then it'll be mission complete. But then, yeah, it'll just go back to you're just okay. there. And I think, you know, there's definitely times you want to go back to mother base because you want to see how everybody's doing. And I think like, for instance, the uh, growth of your puppy, you got the puppy, which oh. by the way, I couldn't find, like I kept oh hearing it gosh. and I was freaking oh, out because no. I'm like in the middle of a mission, but I'm looking around and be like, okay, well there's a puppy around here somewhere it needs oh. help. I got to find it. Cause what is it? Is it going to die? Is it going to starve? I don't right, know. So right. then, I, I, I couldn't find it. I had to keep going. And then luckily I heard it again later on. And so I got it. But you so know, I could have just missed it. I could have just absolutely missed it. And I missed, if I didn't go back to Mother Base, actually, I would have missed kind of seeing it grow up and stuff like that because oh, it'll come and so stuff like adorable. that. So you do want to go back. You know, so they grow up so like fast. The dog too. is just somewhere in the world and you have to find it? Yeah, I, I had to find it. And then. Okay. You know, I admit I uh, I had to, I had to tranquilize it. This is the only way to, oh, to get no. this done, I so safe. I could get it under the Fulton <laughs> balloon. You know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It goes up, gets 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 captured, and then you know, but you know, it has a good happy ending at the end. Yeah, so. uh huh. I love it. Bizarre. So, how much does the actual mission structure and like what you're actually doing in the open world of Afghanistan feel like just a series of Ground Zero esque? objectives kind of strung together does it feel bigger and more grand than that or is it just like rescue this person go from here to there yada 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 
No, I think that there's some context. I mean, there's certainly, um, you know, some missions that seem pretty basic, but, you know, you'll, you'll have um, Miller talking to you, you know, about the importance of, you know, why this mission's important. There's side missions. Even some of those are important. Um, one of the ones that really struck me was, like, for instance, you know, you're, <clears throat> you're down there and um, you can't actually uh, interrogate anybody. You can interrogate them, mm -hmm. but you don't understand what they're saying because they're, they're talking in Russian, speaking in Russian. Okay. So then there's another side mission where you, you know, you go capture uh, an interpreter, a, a Russian language specialist, bring them back to the mother base, and then from that moment on, you can actually interrogate people That's so cool. in Russian. Now, you certainly you didn't have to do that, but then you wouldn't have the option to interrogate people. So wait, so Big Boss just magically knows Russian after you capture that person? Well, I guess, you know, maybe someone's simultaneously translating uh, or something like sure. that. I don't know. We're getting in some deep lower weeds there. <laughs> Speaking of uh, Big Boss talking, how, yeah. how is Kiefer? How is, how is old Kiefer doing? Is you feeling like it's pretty scant on the voice lines? Or, or is it more Finders Kiefer's? Yes, losers. Oh boy, I'm not going to look over that way. Good call. Um, good call. I thought yeah, I thought it was it was it was pretty good. You know, I again not being able to speak to some of the the story stuff. I, I can't get into that. But you know, I did notice like just when I'm you know around the world doing little stuff. You know, you can obviously tell he's done little voice commands for commanding the horse. Yeah, you know, sure. Spring your horse out and little things like that. So, um, you know, I. I'm gonna gonna admit to everybody like the whole voice acting wars between Hater yeah. and, and Sullivan. I actually, it's not something that really concerns me. I don't. Right. Hater's not in that super married to your like love of the series. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you know what? I mean, Kiefer Sullivan's a great act. You know, he's a great actor. So I mean, yeah. like yeah. Sutherland, he's a great actor. So I'm like, I don't mind him taking <laughs> the controls for that. And the yeah. more this is a weird comparison, but the more I play The Witcher three the more Geralt's voice kind of annoys me. And I feel like it's a hater-like situation where it's like, people might be attached to that voice from previous centuries, but compared to the rest of the voice, voice acting, it stands out as just being Come too on, gruff Roach. and just so much less subtle. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm, I'm <laughs> kind of excited for the new direction as much as like, you know, hater is my snake. Yeah. Like, I'm okay with it. But Kojima's, I compared it to Mad Max, strangely enough. Uh, saying like, oh, he's not going to talk too much, and that mm -hmm. seems accurate. Now it's suddenly in vogue to have a quiet protagonist. Right. Yeah. I think of all the uh, video games of Forest that have uh, been very present uh -huh. in, that, <laughs> in that nature. Um, well, again, like not wanting to divulge any uh -huh. some sort of the story stuff. Uh, I honestly, I didn't, I didn't think it was a, a conspicuous sure. sort of thing. So mm -hmm. they've they've shown the mission in I, Afghanistan. I, I, actually, oh, I would I interrupt you. I'm sorry. I would say, you know, Kojima said in a broad sense previously that. You know, maybe cutscenes are going to be different and stuff. And without, you know, going into specifics, any of that, you know, I think maybe that's one thing that maybe people have to take and consider when they're talking about what's the exposition going to be like in a cutscene. Mm -hmm. Maybe it'll just be less, not because, you know, he didn't want to pay Sutherland or whatever the wild rumors are out there, but maybe sure. it's just he might keep it leaner. Maybe cutscenes, okay. they'll just, you know, not go on for, you know, 15 minutes just talking at you right. continuously. That's so, you know... There's that to consider, it's too. It's tricky. It's like one of the main criticisms of that series. But also, I don't think that there's a, a, a diehard Metal Gear fan in existence that wouldn't say that they... I that I hung, I hunger for every single second of like Metal Gear Solid 4's just stupid, ridiculous story. I, yeah. I wouldn't trade out any of those moments. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Even that final cutscene? It's like... Not <laughs> the one that I had to pause and go work an entire shift at work and right. come back because I thought I was gonna have time. You couldn't turn uh, half an hour out of that baby no, time. I mean, maybe. Okay. Basically, what I'm saying is I, I would just be, I'm worried about there being too much rubber banding in the opposite direction. Uh, sure, I still want something there, you know. Right. But well, obviously you got to play the thing. So. so, I know you can't really talk too much about story. We've seen a mission that they've released is in Afghanistan. It's Snake capturing Miller, or like rescuing Miller. Is that the first mission? Can you say that? And then Miller's like helping you out from your base. Um. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And Miller seems like he has a pretty prominent role so yeah. far in the first third. Yeah. yeah. He's cool. Been, he's been featured a lot so yeah. far. It's cool to see more of that character. Right. Also, fans have really speculated, Kato, uh, based on the action figures released, that that flaming figure from the hospital is Vulgan from Metal Gear Solid Three. He looks. I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> I can't talk about that. Okay. Oh, Can you man. say one third of the way through? Do you feel like there's a lot? of mysteries set up? Is it basically the mysteries that the fans have been speculating about that you are also wondering about at this point? Or when you started playing the game, is it like, oh, there's a thousand questions I have that were not even on the table before? I think that, you know, what I've experienced so far and what, you know, how the sort of lead up for the game has been, I think, including Ground Zeroes, I might add, I think that um, as you play through the beginning, I think you'll be on 
pretty firm footing, if that if that's the yeah. right phrase, so to speak. So I think that the way that the story you know rolls along, I think it's um, you know it talks to some of those you know to some of the questions that fans have, but I think sure. that it, it also it sets up whatever the rest of the game is going to be. I think pretty nicely. So I think my I guess what I'm saying is that I think you're the way you're sort of led into it and sort of brought in and drawn into the story, I think is um, is pretty intriguing. And sure. I think that, you know, your interest in what's going on, I think, is only going to continue. So. Okay. Did you get, cool. uh, did you talk at all about multiplayer? Uh, multiplayer details are out, uh, some of them are out there, and they did talk to us a little bit about that. Uh, those details will be coming next Tuesday. That's when that embargo, lifts? embargo lifts. Okay. Yeah. okay, gotcha. But you have a lot to say about multiplayer. I have some things to say about that. <laughs> okay, cool. So I feel like I'm talking to a developer here. It's a very weird situation. So, yeah. are and tricky Kato stuff, feels man. like he's yeah. talking to a fanboy. I just yeah. turns out he is. That's yeah. a nice thing, Ben, is usually you only have to edit videos of developers talking about their games and release them when the embargo goes up, but right. like trying to did, like remember like what you can talk about, especially some some embargoes and NDAs get really weirdly yeah. specific about certain things. Oh, Nintendo, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's a good uh, thing I don't have my phone on me because it might be buzzing off the hook from yeah. like, oh, you know, LA area code. From yeah, yeah. Kali, yeah. Huh? Oh, Mr. Kojima. Yeah. Oh, it's Ocelot <laughs> exactly, on the phone. Yeah. Um, Kim, back to pre three. Oh wow. Did you have any thoughts on Metal Gear that from what you've played that stand out from? Oh, uh, I agree with him on the. So I didn't play Ground Zeroes, and oh, okay. uh, now I have it downloaded, so I am sure. going to try it out. But it took me. It was hard for me to figure everything out and transition into the game without it. Play. Yeah, the okay. controls and everything. So yeah, I, I agree with him on that point. Like I said, I started from the start screen as well. I don't remember anything crazy, so don't even go there. Uh, and you know, spent some time in Afghanistan as well. So, did you play through the hospital sequence? No. Okay, interesting. Cool. Uh, what else did you play at pre three? Lego Dimensions. Is yes, that yes? Lego Dimensions. Does that seem okay? Just it a Lego game. It seems freaking awesome. Oh really? Yeah, I really liked it. I, I was actually thinking. I was like, why didn't I bring that up sooner? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, the Lego movie and everything that Lego's been doing, they have that great sense of humor, and they're bringing that in to this game with such a large roster of, like, 14 different franchises, and you're just like, I don't know how any of this is going to make sense, but right. they found some weird way to do it, so I'm fine with it. But, I mean, like, it's got The Simpsons. Um, it's got, I don't know what it means. They wouldn't tell me. I asked them, they're like, I, what's midway games midway like, arcade games <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm like what do you mean by that and they're like we're not ready to talk about That's that bizarre. yet but i mean maybe mortal combat spy hunter type things I don't know. yeah so and then like um, portal portal yeah like portal. portal and the simpsons in the same <laughs> game with wizard of oz like wizard of oz also back to the future back yeah. to the future lord of the Rings. but I are mean, all these characters really interacting or is it just like you go into the wizard of oz hub now you go into the back to the future hub so the three main characters are batman uh -huh. wild style from lego movie sure and Gandalf from Lord of the Rings mm -hmm. and they're all on an adventure together and what they do is like essentially like all these portals are opening up and they got and everybody's getting mixed in all the different worlds so mm -hmm. you have to visit them so like I saw the Wizard of Oz world and the Scooby-Doo world I love I was that's there. such a weird sentence I love yeah. it <laughs> um which was very cool I mean just seeing all these like iconic franchises and like Lego form and like they really are nailing like the essence of each of them I mean it was so great like Batman when he first uh met up with the Wizard of Oz characters is like oh Scarecrow of course Scarecrow uh. Oh, of course. like you know, oh, that's so yeah, good. it's just like so damn good. I I just yeah. loved it. Like it made me feel like a little kid again. <laughs> Ghostbusters is freaking one of the franchises in this. Like, come on now, they've got good freaking franchises. I'm excited about this. I'm not excited about just walking through. Uh, store aisles and grabbing these dumb toys off the shelf just so I can experience this crap. Like the monetization so of this whole game is you, has me a little it's worried. an expensive price point. It's yeah. definitely a lot more money right now than Disney Infinity's up there. I think it's ninety nine dollars, right. a hundred dollars, ninety nine, ninety nine yeah. uh, for that's, it. That's, and then that's, that's the hundred dollar point is always yeah. where like Lego seri sets always get serious. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. like right. the hundred dollar set is yeah. the big deal. Here's it, the it's castle. The big deal. Yeah. 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 You can have the thirty dollar castle but you will yeah. be mocked. The $30 <laughs> castle is just like a tower from the bigger castle fell off and people rebuilt it. That's exactly. <laughs> There's a ghost in there somewhere. Have yes. fun, you idiots. I love those like $10 ones where it's just like, here's here's uh, two walls and a corner. Yes, yeah. yes it's a <laughs> corner with a horse. The rest is up to you to, <laughs> yeah. to visualize. Kids are spoiled these days. Yeah. But you can, if you don't get all crazy about 
having everything. I mean, you can get through the entire critical path without buying any of the extra sets. You'll still go through the Scooby-Doo world. It's part of the story. The extra sets just give you um, the characters to be able to put in the game uh -huh. and play as. And also, like, it'll open up extra areas in the okay. world. So, like, if you put Scooby in the Scooby le level, he can essentially dig a hole and you can get, like, extra studs through a special So it's like the area. suits in previous yeah. LEGO games, except mm -hmm. you... Okay. What is the core pack? The core pack comes with um, Wild Style, Batman, right. um, the Batmobile, and Gandalf. And sorry. so you don't need to buy the world separately it's Correct. just characters okay yeah. that's yeah. a little bit better I mean, just a hundred bucks though i'm just trying to is it because of the legos like yes. do you have to it's pretty little thing about it too Al. it's lego is price point is high on yeah. everything i yeah. think that's what it is and then all these different franchises to put in the game probably was <laughs> not cheap by any means are you building the legos and then putting them into the game or are these like pre like built so these are Figs. some of these I, I believe come pre-built but the point of each car is that you rebuild them into they come with three forms total so you'll get like one form the batmobile but then maybe in the story you'll need to and this is only with the batmobile because it's required but you'll put it you'll need a different it can transform into like a bat blaster where it just uh Wait, do you rebuild it in real yeah, life? Yes. Oh my God, you that's awesome. You rebuild it outside of the game. That Wait, is so but you don't cool. need to. Uh, they haven't like they said mm. they're trying to make you not do anything you don't want to do, but like the point <laughs> oh, is, building it gives Legos. you, it gives you the instructions. Arm. Yeah, it gives you the instructions. You rebuild it outside on the, the screen. Game. Yeah. Wait. So it's like a digital instruction yeah. booklet. Oh, weird. Wait, so what is it? Both. Hmm. So like what it I'm gives imagining... you the instructions to rebuild like the Batmobile and turn it into oh. another form, oh, the and then you build it on the outside after you read the instructions of how to do it. Cause you know, kids, you need, okay. to, you need to give them some some sure. guidance, and then you put it or back on the olds. toy portal, and it transfers it into the game. It is so cool. Uh -huh. Yeah, I did that. It was pretty cool. <laughs> how does how do portals work within the portal world? Well, I guess that's a question that we'll find out. They didn't show us that world. So there's so. gonna be two types of portals yeah, in that universe. Much. Okay, great. So if you if you build anything of your own creation, does the game give you anything for that? Like, would there be any call for that? It's like, hey, go build, uh, you know, your own car or something. It like uh, that? it warps into the game, uh, deformed and asking for a mercy kill. <laughs> right, right. Right. So like, the old, I, the I black, didn't. They didn't wheel. say. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think anything like that. I just think they wanted people to be able to actually build and like have that physical feeling of have playing with the Legos while sure. the Axel are in the game. So, uh -huh. well, I guess then kind of a related, but you know, maybe you just answered. But it, I guess I don't know if they have any retconning where it's like, well existing lego you know licensed lego you know pirate ships or whatever mm -hmm. if they could bring any of those back in if they could so. be like that'd be cool you know, yeah. yeah 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 that'd be uh, the dream i think hey real quickly fortnite tim and i played a lot of it on the cover story trip a okay, long time ago really i was not on that it. oh really oh i'm sorry no, uh, right. i really liked what i played uh, i'm excited I, for it i really liked it too and yeah. i was not excited for it uh -huh. just because like they haven't really given me much about it. I haven't heard about it really since our cover story, which right. has been a shame. And I played it. I had a blast. It's like, going to be fun. I like that it's free to play and they're going that route. And you know about the pricing, right? Yeah. Because they wouldn't tell us anything about that. So what, what are they doing? Are you optimistic? Yeah, it feels like you can earn everything yourself. Kind of like how you do it with Mass Effect multiplayer. But sure. if you want to progress faster, you can... Is it characters? Is it skins? Cosmetic? Oh, they didn't make it sound. Like, I think cosmetics will be okay. available for price. They didn't say anything like you'd have to pay to get. Like you can unlock all the the characters as you go through the game. Was okay. my impression from yeah, it. I'm excited just to play co-op with friends and just to build an my, elaborate for it. My worry about this though is they've made it very much a game to play with your friends. They don't because yeah. I was asking them how do you coordinate this with other play. Like what if you get a player in your party who just you know wants to sabotage you because essentially if you're not all working together this game doesn't work yeah it's basically know? like it feels Joe like Juba. yeah yeah well, that's what i'm <laughs> saying and they're like well we're just really hoping that like people will stick with their friends and that yeah. and i'm like you have to get four people you have to hope that f you can you know wrangle four of your friends to play this and right. really work together on it and i'm just not sure if that's feasible or it depends it, on how popular the game is too and right. like i said this was the first we've heard about it in a while and it's very yeah. cool i mean you go out in the world you're scavenging first off all these 
like wood um, mm-hmm. to build up your walls of your fort. I got a lot of stone to double protect because you can make stone walls as you go on. Um, so you're getting everything that you need and then you guys have to sit together and figure out a construction of a fort. And then once you build your fort, basically the monsters come at you and you can like trigger them to yeah and they've got it yeah and they got to start attacking and uh it's insane it's so frenzied yeah. and fun but then you're also trying to repair parts of your fort as it's going on so what we did is like we had one person inside the fort repairing everything while the three of us went out and just like you know tried to fight them off mm-hmm. but they're like lobbing uh certain goblins and weird yeah. creatures like up on your roof yeah it's and like, i mean it's you can, to the top you can like, craft really like cool. grenades and stuff to help you with that and it's it's just fun like the progression system seems really cool i liked that i still had to like melee fight mm-hmm. these guys and it was fun i and think like the easy pitch for this game is like orcs must die meets minecraft there you go it kind of feels yeah it like, does and like cool. you can get so elaborate with your fort creations and mm-hmm. really geek out over what oh let's do this because this is going to keep it like i i don't know i thought it was really fun and i wasn't expecting it to be as fun mm-hmm. it's like oh you build a fort okay you know but it's actually really fun yeah. when, Did you, when is this supposed to be out I don't know. I know they haven't given it like a solid release date. Yet. Also, I haven't they addressed consoles saying, either, which yeah, is a bummer. 2015. I think they're going to keep it on. They just announced Mac this week. So, PC and Mac, I think, is okay. what they're going to stick with. Okay. I don't see it coming to consoles. I think that's a shame because I think it do really well. You can play but... it with a controller. I, I would imagine at some point they'll figure out those deals. Here's, but, two, here's open. you build up a little hub and get to like create your own little world. So, maybe like and that'll influence what characters you have access to and when so that's good to spend like the currency that you make in the game from each sure fort you like i said you could build like a medic station and then you like house your different characters that you have and put them in those stations to like okay. work on them sure. so it's kind of cool seeing that part outside of the game like i said i i walked away being like i definitely play this it's cool, cool. yeah I, i'm really excited about it too um also really quickly rock band Rock Band 4. Rock Does band it feel four. like playing a new version of Rock Band? Um, It's Rock Band. Okay, great. That's okay. <laughs> that's, but that's not a bad thing, no, per se. I love like, it. Not much has really changed. It. You know, they're not really showing off right now. They, they claim you're going to be able to interact more with the crowd. They claim that... Uh-huh. Everyone's been asking for that. So. Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know. You Romance can talk options. to the crowd. I mean, they will shout back at you songs they want you to sing. They can like read the songs that are downloaded on your system. They said even from like oh, DLC cool. and stuff and shout those that's songs really at clever. you. So do they still have like the recommended thing, which were in the playlist before? They'd be like, "We recommend you purchase Twist and Shout. Play that one." <laughs> Could you delete every song except maybe Freebird if they had it in there? Just so the crowd's <laughs> constantly yelling at you to play Freebird. Oh, uh, gosh, and no, you'll never I, play. I, I wanted to ask you a quick question. Uh-huh. I just I spent this entire weekend moving, and currently I have two things in my trunk that I have a really just I hate looking at them now. Mm-hmm. It's, Corpses. It's a gu- <laughs> It's the guitar and the drums. It's, it's right? your mom and dad, Ben. <laughs> uh, no, it's uh, my Guitar Hero drum kit and my Rock Band drum kit. Okay. And I'm thinking like, God, I just want to get rid of these things, and I'm kind of clinging to hope that maybe I have an excuse to buy the new ones. I don't know mm-hmm. if you get to play around and see the new instruments. Are they smaller, more compact, or any reason mm-hmm. to re up? Not really. No? I didn't see anything that made it like you had to. Just I mean, all that stuff's going to still work. Or yeah. Four yeah, drums? Yeah. Okay. Still four drums. All right. So all that stuff will work too. Okay. So. Cool. Yeah. That sounds I mean, neat. I had fun. But what was your favorite song that you played? They're playing all the old. They didn't even like have any of the newer songs why, really on there. Well, I mean, why would you? Yeah. I just, really? I, I did no doubt. I'm just a girl. But I mean, okay. that's like. That's fun. So that's, they're just doing like old downloadable songs? All right, sure. Interesting. I think they might have one on there. I can't remember the name. The maybe the no, I don't wanna I don't remember. So but okay. there was so an I remember looking at the list, I'm like, oh, these are all ones that have you remember played. playing before. Yeah. Okay. Hey, you remember Rock Band? Here it is. That's cool. pretty much how yeah. they presented it. Like everybody yeah. just got up on stage and was like, Let's do this and I was like, All right. Okay. Yeah, they're just bringing the family back together. The harmonics again, crew you know? is yeah. back in action, so yeah. enthusiastic and nice as always. Cool. Uh so this week has also seen some announcements of things that we're going to see at E3. Mm-hmm. Announcements slash leaks. You guys want to run down dun, some dun, of these dun, fun dun, dun, things? Dun, dun. Let's yeah. do it. What All right. Uh, Kotaku has uh, documents about the Destiny expansion uh, that is going to be releasing this fall holiday season. Uh, so this was like what they previously called Comet um, as the code name. Apparently it is going to be called The Taken King. Uh, apparently Red Bull leak some 
ads and like flyers that also revealed it as called being called the Taken King. But like oh, three new boy. subclasses, like a new raid, apparently against Crota's dad. Uh, so it's like a hive raid on the moon. Kato, I know you're what on are the you edge of your seat. <laughs> yeah. We don't have a, we don't have a lot of avid Destiny players at this table. No, but there are a lot of people out there. Apparently, it's gonna be forty bucks. I'm a big Crota's dad fan. <laughs> I, mean, that's, I don't like Destiny actually, but the dad. Oh, Crota's they're charging cool. for these expansions. <laughs> oh yeah, the previous ones they definitely charged for. I think it was twenty bucks a piece. Oh, I didn't think it was forty bucks. Was the this? Price yeah, this so big one. So this is gonna add a lot of content. I take it In right? In theory, or from the leak stuff that we've seen, you know, new subclasses, people will be excited for. I'm sure it'll raise a level cap stuff like that people were bummed the last expansion didn't have a new raid i'm sure people are excited well, that this one does we can say goodbye to andy and miller when that releases <laughs> yeah definitely all right uh outside of that today uh some artwork leaked or i guess it was tuesday actually on dark souls 3 mm. so we can fully expect to learn more about dark souls 3 which is pretty quick after and bloodborne the rumor is mm. also that miyazaki's on this one as well yeah that's yeah. crazy to think i i how much of that is just marketing though like oh the genius yeah he's, he's on this one he walked by the hallway once yeah, <laughs> he's probably yeah. like he consulted on it a little right, bit like yeah. he just said I, take that out <laughs> i love the idea like, i'd be okay with a bloodborne too at this point like mm -hmm. i think that there's more in that world but i'd and i'd also be i'd love for them just to take another weird hey we're going to a different era Wizard we're in Oz. egypt oh, i don't know yeah. do something totally crazy and go in a different direction uh and then be able to have like this dark souls series continue so that like you know that's kind of something that fans have gotten used to they like mm -hmm. that dark fantasy and stuff like that i don't i'd like to see more dark souls going on um, yeah and and that doesn't mean that they can't continue to experiment and stuff mm -hmm. so sure i mean I, I i'm happy that that name continues to persist yeah definitely uh cam they also announced a new tales rpg did yes you, they did what's it called did you look at that brand up? brand Brandishia, Brand. Can they just boy. get their crap together? <laughs> just call it Tales of Destiny Three. I don't know. It was a weird name, Kim? and I looked at it. <laughs> Velsiria something something shouts what Mr. Boothman. What a <laughs> <laughs> That's not important. Was an accident. <laughs> uh, also, other big announcement on Tuesday: Mirror's Edge Catalyst. Yes. What they showed last year, and they've been talking about forever. Seems like every interview Dice has done ever since what 2008. Whenever Mirror's Edge came out, they're like, hey, we want to get back to that. We're going to get back to that. I, I, you know, I have you know, nothing against that series, uh, but obviously what Files is going to sound like a dick. <laughs> but, you know, it's kind of, to me, it's like the rubber meets the road for that series where it's one of those always, you know, off talk about cult series where people always put on their lists of like, you know, oh, I wish they would, you know, this would come back. Right. And just want to warn people that that it doesn't always come out as they hope you know what i mean where where, sure. where something comes back and it mm -hmm. turns out that people just didn't really care i'm not wishing anything ill against it what i'm just saying we call is it that kid icarus like, syndrome kind yeah of. We've, exactly we've talked a lot about this game this series coming back you know much like perhaps like you know beyond good and evil but i'm really curious to see how many people are really you know itching and you know if it's going to sell and things like that I, right to build off what kato said i actually went back to mirror's edge just a little while ago mm -hmm. i wanted to, to see how oh, man I, I remember loving this game at the time uh mm -hmm. it did first person controls uh and navigation kind of platforming like nothing else had uh and it's been something that's been often referenced as oh this game has like this plus mirror's edge you know right. first person uh platforming uh and navigation a lot of games have been inspired by it since then a lot of games have done it better mm -hmm. uh that first game is still very wonderful in its own way, but it's clunky in a lot of different ways that games have kind of smoothed out. So they have a long ways to go. They can't just do more of what they mm -hmm. did. So mm -hmm. I'm curious if they're able to add something new to first person navigation. Yeah. They have to otherwise. Yeah. yeah. All we know at this point is that it is apparently not a sequel. Yeah. So prequel. Catalyst. Prequel, yeah. I mean, with the Catalyst, yeah, you think prequel, prequel or yeah. reboot or something else, but it looks like it's still Faith uh, mm -hmm. in the lead there as a protagonist. So mm -hmm. I'm curious to see what dice can do and how the hell they have time for this uh, with Battlefront and also I'd imagine Battlefield's going to continue as well. Yeah. EA's probably beating have they those drums. given well, a release window for it? Because they haven't said yet. anything. So I've, I would have, I have a feeling this game isn't going to come out anytime soon. Yeah, you never I think know. It would be just like of how little we know about it. And right. I don't think, I just, I don't know. I think they're like, they're like we want to get that announcement out there that we're working on it so people stop asking about it and they get excited. But mm -hmm. I feel like it's going to be a while. Could be. Certainly could be. Uh, outside of that, we also have the Nathan Drake collection. Yes. Uncharted 1, 2, and 3 single-player campaigns are going to be coming to PS4. What I'm curious about with this is, okay, originally Uncharted 4 is going to come out this holiday season. Yeah. 
were they gonna originally were they planning on releasing both of these at the same time god it's confusing right yeah well you know what else do they have in uh their first party lineup other than a bunch of remasters i guess i, <laughs> I mean, guess the cynic in me says you know you're kind of onto something in the sense that you gotta wonder if they pulled the a rabbit out of their hat because they just had to you but know? i they talked i mean naughty dog talks so much about how tough it was to port last of us mm-hmm. from ps3 to ps4 this is blue point the austin company who's done like the eco shadow collection which they I do think is heralded work. as like yeah one of the best they also did titanfall for 360 yeah, also heralded was, as like a masterpiece yeah well um, as far as you know ma- a miracle they're able to pull yeah. it off yeah. yeah for sure um but they're actually working on the conversion so i can't imagine that just because of the delay of uncharted 4 mm-hmm. that now they announce like oh we're gonna do this thing like i imagine it's been in the works for a while mm-hmm. from that team but are you guys excited to play that at 1080 60. i don't ever see the need to um play those games again perfect okay uh, i i <laughs> love the i enjoy all of them except for the first one i thought was now there has a lot of defenders of the first yeah uncharted. we talked about it on the podcast yeah yeah, ago, yeah yeah but regardless uh uncharted 2 and 3 are super fun in the same way that like i enjoyed watching national treasure that nick cage movie that's kind of indiana jones modern like ripoff yeah yeah i enjoyed it i those are just such one sitting kind of fun popcorn games that not they don't go back to them for the mechanics. I yeah, I think you know Tim, didn't you tell me when you were playing three that you were just going to go down to the easy difficulty yeah. just to oh, you know, yeah. just to get through the story because I mean the yes. gameplay is not you know the gun gunplay is not why you're playing that game. That's mm-hmm. not why I play it. There's lots of people that just dig into multiplayer and love the mm-hmm. multiplayer and will play on the hardest difficulty and it gels with them. To me, mm-hmm. I've never loved that gunplay. Yeah, I don't know about you guys. Hey, Kim. Hey, uh, out of curiosity, yeah. you went on that Uncharted 4 cover story with me not too long ago. Yep. Were you? Did you feel more of a connection with the character of Nathan Drake or Sam Drake for yeah. Uncharted 4? Nathan Drake. Nathan Drake? Yeah. Okay, we have a hot exclusive here on this episode of the podcast. Uh-oh. Uh, uh, Kyle, if you'll hit it over there in the booth. We have an actual cutscene. Oh my God! From he's Uncharted doing this. Four, Tim, you really? are playing Sam Drake. <laughs> oh okay. my God! Kim, you are going to be playing Nathan Drake. <laughs> this is, is this? we recorded it on recorders uh during the uncharted 4 trip this is an actual cutscene from uncharted 4 who, who am i you're, you're going sam. to be sam <laughs> okay gotcha nate's brother give me give me a tone who, i'm what's... gonna be the wind by the way oh, he has, he has <laughs> like the a, wind. yeah perfect i guess has... i should look at you while I yeah do this, right? what's what's sam's it's troy, has, troy baker it's troy right? baker doing kind of like an east coast rough and tumble okay. it's basically troy baker being nolan north oh what the hell is and then this? kim you're going to be nolan north uh i will set up this scene are you guys ready hey, handsome what have you done all right uh, um so we don't want to release the actual audio because it sounds mm-hmm. like crap because it's recorded on our phones yeah but this is an actual transcript on chart four cutscene okay exterior night the jungles on the island of madagascar nathan just climbed a big rock <laughs> and is out of breath and exasperated when his brother prompts him to action and take it away tim good to see you're alive little brother come on we've got a treasure to find perfect then now that was the last line of the video they released sorry to interject kim now we're going into fresh territory nathan drake hold up man i mean what are we doing hang on you're more can't can I stop for a second kim you're more <laughs> Jeez, who's the direct, you're more who's the frustrated this, like okay, hey, all right, what all right. are we we're doing losing here? Our light, people we're losing our light come Let's on hold up man i mean what are we doing what do you mean i mean our supplies are at the bottom of the indian ocean okay so we go steal from Nadine's army. Yeah, and there's that. We're going to, we're going up against an army. Okay, we got to do it again without the stumble, uh, okay. Kim. Just that oh last bit. God. We're going up against an army. If we could get a clean take of that, we'd appreciate it. <laughs> okay, go for it. Yeah, and there's that. We're going up against an army. Well, we've been holding our own so far. Yeah, well, being marooned in the middle of nowhere. We were trying to get here, remember? When we had a when we had an escape plan, just hear me out. Crazy suggestion. Hang on, stop. Oh my Kim. god. <laughs> We're gonna go. We want it to be more jokey, Nolan North Northy during that crazy suggestion line. Like, Kim's hey, stop. Be trailer. Crazy <laughs> suggestion here. A little more personnel. A little more. Do you flair. know how hard it is to try to even do this in a male voice? I'm so sorry. Kato. Look, the, the, Look, the, the tape's so, rolling, Kim. This tape's is, rolling. Oh my god. All right, ready to go? All right, and take it away. Uh, if Nathan I would have had the script ahead of time, I could have prepared. It's not the way we roll here, Nathan Drake. Take it away. Halfway through the page. When Wait. we had an escape plan, just hear me out. Crazy suggestion. Okay. Let's go down there and at least secure one of Rafe's boats. The boats can wait. Want to know what we're doing here? 
We're buying my life back, okay? And we're going to do that by stepping into that jungle and finding Libertalia. Uh, just uh, kind of a question. Just a note. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> there's, that was a typo. Uh, Libertalia is the pirate uh, crazy den treasure code. You're directing us and you added a false question mark at the end of a statement? Well, look, that was a typo and I blame my keyboard. All right, take it away, Nathan Drake. Have you have even seen any signs of a massive pirate colony? Because I sure as hell haven't. Perfect. You're a little late to start developing doubts, don't you think? Look, can we at least acknowledge the chance that Avery's idea of a secret pirate utopia <laughs> didn't plan pan out? And maybe we're just swept up in this fantasy when instead we should be looking for a real way to save you? I was, it gets a little more emotional during this point. I'm um, going to scour this island inch by inch if I have to until I find that treasure. Now! If you're confused about what you're doing here, then you can go home, Nathan. Wait, wait. I can go home? Are you kidding me? Do you have any idea what I put on the line to get you here? I love it. Keep it going. How about what I put on the line, okay? The last 15 years of my life. This has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with okay, that. Okay, stop. We're going to do that. We're going to do that <laughs> part again. Um, Tim, I want you to take it away from the last 15 years of my life, and then you're going to interrupt Nathan uh, at the very tail end with that. Okay, with gotcha. yours. Okay, and... Action. The last 15 years of my life. This has nothing to this do with that. This has everything to do with that. <laughs> That's a little early, but keep it going. We're good. At this point, Sam Drake sees a symbol on the rock behind Nathan carved into the rock. What? Nate looks behind him and sees the pirate marking on the rock. Holy crap. <laughs> Still want to go home? Let's just see what else we can find. And music or sound. I have to go to the Kyle. bathroom. Excuse me, Nate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and wrap. Well done, everybody. Oh Hot exclusive. Uncharted oh, 4. We did it. They see a rock three. or a pirate there's rock? A car there's like pirate <laughs> carvings, and they're like, oh, Libertalia is on this island because oh. there's Avery's markings. Great job, Kim. You, you nailed it. it, Kim. Cool. Stay tuned for the next <laughs> segment. We're going to be reading a bunch of emails from the listeners and viewers and watchers. So stay tuned for that. Welcome back to the Game Informer Show. This section, we're going to be answering some reader emails, uh, or listener emails, I guess we always say reader emails. Emails, emails, emails. Just emails. I yeah. hope our listeners can read. Yeah, I'd, I'd hope so too. Um, so basically, uh, every week, we encourage you to send in your emails and uh, send them over to, to podcast at gameinformer.com. Uh, they can be funny stories about your life that kind of prompt us to have a... Well, we've got some cool like anecdotes. Yeah, I fell and, in a hole. Yeah. And, <laughs> and there was a copy of uh, Super Mario RPG <laughs> down here, usually about games. Uh, and they might spark a fun conversation or something. We always choose an email of the week uh, and send you a little gift and hope you get out of that hole. <laughs> it's going to be hard to send you the, the gift here in the hole. Uh, so we start, we're going to start off with a, some questions about uh, E3 here. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, so Jack from San Pedro, California says, Hi, G.I. Joes and G.I. Jane, if Kim is there. <gasps> oh, uh, that was nice. No. Thank you. Uh, I love the Mass Effect games and I'm excited that BioWare thus far has said that the next installment will place emphasis on exploration. Mm -hmm. With rumors that BioWare may be a little bit, uh, may show a little bit more of the next Mass Effect game at E3, my question is, what do you all want from an, the upcoming Mass Effect game? If I can explore interesting planets and cultures with a gang of fun characters who I can re recruit and maybe use some biotics on a few enemies along the way, I'll be thrilled. Love the lore of that universe. Um, also, with an established franchise such as Mass Effect, how much information do you want to know about the game from a conference such as E3? Personally, I avoid extended... Then they go on to talk about how they sure. try to avoid mm -hmm. spoilers. Seems like there's can. no way this guy... What's his name again? Jack. Jack is going to be disappointed by the next Mass Effect if all he wants. <laughs> like, I hope there's just, aliens it's in it. It's just the synopsis for every Mass Effect. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. right. Uh, mm -hmm. I saw this uh, theory or kind of like fan plot for the next Mass Effect, and I actually got really excited about it. Uh, so let me explain what it was once that I read on the internet. Uh, the idea was that with the Reaper invasion through the original trilogy, um, they basically built an arc. This is not confirmed. Again, this is just some weirdo on the internet, but I really like the idea. They built an arc and put uh, like representatives of every race from the galaxy that we're used to in Mass Effect into this arc and sent them off to another galaxy. And so like the beginning would be like dealing with life and just like the weird politics on that arc. And then you'd be unloading into a new galaxy and interacting with whole new species. Man, genocide would be so easy. You don't need a genophage. You just need two bullets. <laughs> and a pillow. Yeah. <laughs> over Krogan's yeah. face. Yes. Uh, I, th I think that's a really interesting idea. Uh, and I think it'd be an easy way to get around the problem of like, well, do you do a sequel? Do you do a prequel? Like if you just set it off in a whole new galaxy, but it's still a smart way to get like the classic races in there. 
I have no idea if that's what they're doing. I would certainly hope so. It'd be fun. Yeah, I mean, they've built up such a great universe with all this lore. Like, I hope they stay true to that and bring back kind of what makes people fall in love with Mass Effect. And I think to, with his question, um, with the reader was saying, I agree with, I want them to, what Bioware does really well for me is characters. I mean, I'm excited to see what they come up with for the next game. Sure. Um, I'd like to see at E3 some sort of trailer that even shows us any of that, like even a main character. What do you mean that footage of Casey Hudson looking at the stars and then? <laughs> oh my god, that was the biggest like fake out. Yeah. So I mean, for me, I finally want to see just even a face of who sure. who is the face of this game. I mean, what what is going on? Hopefully, there isn't. What do Asari's look like now? Or something? Yeah, yeah, like I'd like to see the world. I'd like them to jump in the future, honestly, and kind of mm -hmm. go and... But, but how do you do that? Like, what I ending know, do you choose? I know. Well, that's the problem. And I'd like for them to kind of make... I mean, Dragon Age does this all the time where they do have choices, and then they're like, this one is canon, oh, and really? that's what we stick... And that's... I could see them doing something like that, but they have to make it interesting. I mean, what everything that happened with the trilogy now is kind of like that's over and done with and you have to bring some fresh ideas into this world as well so sure. i want them to keep, like retain what we love about the series but also i wouldn't mind doing some freaking space battles too like hardcore yeah. like there's so, there's so much they could do especially with more open for exploration you're mm -hmm. always just like sitting there in your you know traveling in your little ship and you never actually get to move it you know Mm -hmm. Right, right. That buzz always bothers me. If you could combine the stakes of the end of Mass Effect 2 with like actual real time space battles mm -hmm. in some way that right. that was fun, that'd be really cool. Yeah. It, is, it is a new team. It's the Montreal team. Mm -hmm. And they no longer have Casey Hudson, who's the creative director for 1 through 3. Uh, he left Bioware and now he's creative director over at Microsoft. You know, so. I, I really like the reset that the series is, is assumedly going to do. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> the question I really want them to answer is, is I don't want it to be the same sort of you know, high universe stakes that the last series was. Right. If they could actually find a way to recast the story, not just tread along the same, you know, some of the same high points mm -hmm. that the other one did. Yeah. Again, like the real super high stakes. If they could wait, make something different, more interesting, I think that would be, to me, a more compelling story yeah. than simply like, oh no, the universe is going to yeah, end. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you, you, right. you hear so much praise about Witcher 3, and I don't know where that story goes, but it starts on a way more personal level mm -hmm. uh it's not about yeah. saving the world out of the gate mm -hmm. i would want um, it to kind of dial back a little bit to mass effect one which is my favorite story-wise of the trilogy just to really? have like yeah i love mass effect one and just have that focus like saren is the villain just make it a bad dude yeah. on a rampage in yeah. the galaxy yeah. i don't want this you know crazy alien invasion the world force. is I, on yeah, your shoulders I, I think to answer jack's uh other part of his question is before we move on i think what would be an awesome like i take for granted that the story and characters will be cool i think that bioware has that down i don't i don't really sure. doubt them there i just want to see a lot of gameplay i want to see what they're doing differently this time huh. what is just what does the gunplay look like customization ship ship building stuff like well that. you know the exploration we you know all kind of laugh looking back at the first mass effect and the mako and i love the fun mako yeah. i you know in, oh, in sort of a mako. you know a love hate i guess but you know a lot of the worlds are barren and then you go to the planet scanning and stuff and so i haven't felt that they've really gotten that planet that yeah. sort of wanderlust mm -hmm. and exploration mm -hmm. really downright. Right. And if this one could do that, I think that would be a huge step. You know, yeah. kind of talking about you talk about gameplay, yeah. that could be a huge step. Because yep. yeah. like I said, we'll know the story will, you know, should be pretty good. So that was the other thing I was gonna say is more Mako like stuff. Somewhere between the probes and the Mako would be yeah. good. As long as the um, Mako controls better, I'm Yeah, fine maybe. It. Sure. Uh all right, so thanks, Jack. Um yeah, hopefully we'll good learn, question. hopefully we'll we'll learn more at E three there. Uh all right. Uh, the next one is from Matt from Stockbridge, Georgia. Uh, hi, Game Informants. Love the show. Keep up the good work. Now my questions. Uh, <laughs> How do I get out of this hole? <laughs> How has E3 changed for you guys over the years? Do you see it as getting better or on the decline? With more and more games being revealed off the show floor mm -hmm. and developers mm -hmm. and publishers doing their own thing, does it feel more like a chore than a mysterious wonderland of days gone by? Thanks for your time, Matt. Uh, I think what's interesting is... We like when I started at Game Informer, like you know, like six or so years ago. That that was that conversation going on about like God, E three is just going. Like, there's oh, it's not a point anymore. It's just becoming more like less and less and less. I don't hear that anymore. I don't hear people saying one thing or the other. Actually, I don't know yeah, what you right. guys think. I mean, I think it does sort of wax and wane a little bit. But mm -hmm. I would agree with Tim in the sense that I think it's stabilized. And I think one of the things that 
always kind of um, is important to point out about E3 is that, you know, we certainly get a lot of coverage out of it and a lot of gamers get really excited about it. But I think on its face, a lot of it is for, you know, sort of the business people. And that's who they're talking to when they do the old Sony press conference talking about sales numbers in South America. That's not mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. gamers. That's for a lot of the, you know, analysts and things like that. And so I think, you know, E3 is, is kind of has a bedrock in a certain way mm -hmm. of what we can expect. But I would also say that, you know, for all gamers and all the things of whether it's bigger or smaller, all that kind of stuff, I mean... We always come out of E3 excited. Oh, yeah. I yeah. Mean, we, yeah. You know, we know a lot of it the stuff that's going to be there. It you in a yeah. way just to have all those announcements hitting you and getting excited again. Yeah. yeah. We there, always come out excited. There's it, always oddballs. Like last year, no one could have seen Grim Fandango being released for PS4. Like that kind of stuff just yeah. completely is out of the blue. As much as like Fallout 4s and whatever mm -hmm. games are announced beforehand, like there's still those little details that are so exciting. And, and, and anticipation goes a long ways. If Grim Fandango had been announced as a ps4 remaster um just on a video on playstation blog mm -hmm. it right. would have not have had the splash that having everyone's eyes on this mm -hmm. one annual event had and, yeah. and people can kind oh, of yeah. clamor together about it that's that's absolutely exciting that's actually my favorite part um doing now writing for game informer and going to e3 is when we are all in that room together yeah. mm -hmm. and we're like yes <laughs> like, you know <laughs> and, we're Kim, like and kim's dancing about it? kingdom hearts yeah and stuff. yeah, that, yeah i mean it's just like we're all gamers. I mm -hmm. mean, we love it. So I and, like seeing us all get excited. And this year, you'll be able to see that live because not only are we live streaming all of the press conferences, which they've added more and more. We're now doing a Square and Bethesda press conference this year. Uh, but we're going to be live streaming them on our site with uh, editors giving their live commentary. So if you want to see the crew at home, which, Kim, you're going to be at home this yes, year. Yes, I will be on some of those. And, like, Joe and Miller and some other... Are you I will be, be on some of those with no, Joe, unfortunately. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I think it's Jeff uh, Jeff Marquefala. That's right, yeah. And yeah. also Wade in the booth, uh, the other video guys. So they're going to be kind of manning those streams, and you'll be able to see their live reactions. So if you want to watch it along with us and with our Twitch community... You can join oh, in there. Man. It'll be fun. I hope there's no Kingdom Hearts 3 stuff in a way because it's going to get caught on camera. Yeah, we could uh, we could give you a wireless mic instead of these mics. Can, I'm so worried. Can dance I mean, the I will like, like a maniac. flip the table. Or be behind, like in front of a green screen mm -hmm. and then just have like an emergency green screen thing you can do to hit a blanket so that you're right. covered up and immediately <laughs> obscured. It was a weird thing to say, and I don't regret it. Oh, uh, <laughs> all right. Sounds great. Moving along. Uh, hi, Ben, Tim, and others. Uh, this is this is Kyle <laughs> from Vista, California, by the way. Uh -huh. uh, put on your Nostradamus shades, fellers. Don't tell us what to do. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. <laughs> uh, motion of throwing a paper over my shoulder. Uh, what do you think E3 will look like um, for the next generation of gaming? Xbox 2, PlayStation 5, whatever Nintendo does Crazy. next. Uh, do you think the basic structure will be vastly different considering the changes made since the very first conference? Um, what do you guys think? Uh, Phil Spencer's floating head. Okay. Uh, coming out on switch i don't think so okay uh, I'll just i don't, I don't think, think it's so. going to be that much different i think mm -hmm. it's going to be probably more announcements ahead of time that certainly seems to be the trend mm -hmm. uh more publishers doing their own thing um tougher to get in on the show floor but i'd imagine it's still going to be around next generation mm -hmm. yeah. um i think we all agree with that yeah his next question is what's one story you heard about e3 that was simply not true or exaggerated once you experienced it for yourself I, I was going to answer this as it's like, That's a good one. I think E3 in general, seem it could seem like it's really exaggerated. Mm -hmm. uh, like, oh my gosh, it's just so loud and it's crazy. You walk out on the show floor and you wouldn't believe it. I, I always have tempered expectations going into anything. I never believe, I never get excited until I'm actually there. And I'll, I'll never forget walking into the show floor and just being hit by the wall of sound. Yeah. And just the lights that it just like extend, you know, mm -hmm. in every, every angle of your periphery, like every inch of your peripheral vision is covered in, you know, glitzy games and lights like vying for your attention. And it's so mm -hmm. loud and competing booths, like blaring their People music at each other. Huge Pe lines. Yes, exactly. The uh, smell. So I think that it's hard to over, you know, exaggerate mm -hmm. um, how much of a spectacle it is. Yeah, that's true. I think maybe something I always heard from the press, because I was a big Games Press fan before I started at Game Informer, was that it's tough to keep track of, like, all the news on the show floor. That's mm -hmm. something I always heard. Um, and that, like, people sitting at home and absorbing all the different live streams, so, like, that have a much better picture of what's actually happening mm -hmm. in E3. I think that's very true. Like, you're so busy trying to eat mm -hmm. or run from one appointment to yeah. the next that, like, You'll just be back in the press booth that we have for Game Informer. It's like, oh, did you hear the news about 
Final Fantasy 15 being announced. It's like, wait, what happened? What is yeah. this? Yeah. Like, there's always those little things that slip through the cracks. So, I I love the perspective of sitting back home. Like, you're not missing out on too much if you're just yeah. watching videos online. It, it turns yeah. out you're not going to be sitting down with you know Bethesda for an interview about Fallout, and then the PR person looks up from their phone and mumbles like, oh, "Don't you hear? There's a new Metroid." Hmm. Cool. Right, right. Yeah, it's just mm. never going to happen like that. Well, it's funny. You talk to some developers when you're having appointments with them, and you're just sort of chit chatting, and you say, "Oh, you know, what have you seen down on the floor?" You know famous developer and they're like nothing i've seen these four walls for the past two days and that's it and then but you know i would say it's kind of interesting when you're back at the booth or we're back at the hotel talking and stuff and then there's always those couple games where you didn't really think about it but then you know andy's talking about some game that he saw or someone's talking about some game that they saw and then you're like okay i I gotta go see that that. so everybody's trying to rush in to shoehorn in like oh can i piggyback on this appointment yeah i gotta see it and stuff and so it's always Mm -hmm. fun when that kind of wave of excitement goes through for something that you hadn't really thought about yeah Yeah. that's a good point um okay we're gonna move on to uh the question of the week this is email of the week this is um brandon from wisconsin writes in uh hey Game Informer podcast crew. Hello. I'm a longtime Game Informer reader and love the new podcast. Keep up the good work. My question pertains to gaming habits, rituals, or superstitions. When you play a game, is there anything you do before, during, after your session that you do because you think it'll help you play better? My big thing takes place during a session when I'm on a difficult segment. When I find myself struggling, for some reason or another, I find that I have to lean forward with my elbows on my knees. Hunching forward <laughs> with a serious game face on makes me feel like my chances of success increase. Uh, success increase, And I'm sure it doesn't. Um, my friend and I frequently play online and completely agrees. We always joke during a heated online co-op segment saying to each other, are you leaning forward right now? Uh, that's from Brandon. Yeah, I, I do that wearing? definitely. Like, <laughs> sit on the edge of your seat. It's like, I have to focus now. Give me the, like, I just have to really, really pay yeah. attention hard and, <laughs> like, zone in. Yeah. yeah. Something I realized I do, it's mainly with more retro games and stuff, maybe platforms in particular. But if I'm at a really, really tough part and I'm just beating my head against a wall, maybe, like, some of the tougher Rayman mm-hmm. Legends uh, levels are good examples of this, I find that if I mute the audio completely and i just get that focus and it's like i think it's also it's the focus and also the lack of just being annoyed by hearing the same song for the Mm -hmm. 60th time like just having that new perspective of just Mm -hmm. ambient tone will sometimes kick me through yeah i did did that for bark uh, at the moon and guitar hero one (laughs) i'm I'm just kidding even just like dramatic you know swelling of the music or something where maybe it's a boss battle or something you just get a little bit more relaxed i mean i do that for for racing games you know like i can only hear the buzzing of an engine for so right. long. The roar so of the crowd. Put music on, but I actually I do uh, I do I'm a big leaner. Let's, you know I'm doing racing games. You know just <laughs> oh, like sure. body leans yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. And I've actually thought of putting a sign up on my cubicle saying, "Do not talk to me while I'm racing." So actually, if anybody's any of the employees are listening here, if you right. see me focus on a racing game, even if I'm on a straightaway, do not talk to me because I'll try to ignore you. So I mean. Trying to focus, you know, sure, naturally. important stuff going on. And you know? that's why you're just constantly playing racing games, just so you never have to talk to any of us. No. Okay. I uh, I don't know if this counts. I mean, I do. I lean forward a little bit from time to time. I will save, you know, compulsively, things like that. But whenever there's timing in a game, like, think like Mario 3 Toad Houses with the sliding kind of slot games. I'm thinking. I would try to, like, time it out and, and find out, like, okay, well, I'll try to hit the button right before... It's the one I want. So if it's the star before the radish right. or, or whatever it is, I'll hit on the star because I want it to land on the radish. And more often than you'd think, that actually works really well. Uh, and it's something I do with all timing in games or, or like trying to swing Bowser around and uh-huh. throw him into the bombs in Mario 64 mm-hmm. and just like counting it off. Just like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Three, four, one, two. And so, you know, on one to throw him, it'll go into the bomb and it sure. helps me just kind of keep things mm-hmm. straight. Constantly counting your head. Yeah, so that's uh, the email of the week from Kyle. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Kyle. We'll send you a little special something. Uh, we'll, we'll follow up with you and get your address. And we need a lot of Kyles. On visit you where one. you live. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. There's just they're all Kyles actually. Yeah, Fantastic. everyone's name is Kyle. Um, all right, let's move on to uh, how much? How many more do you think? Yeah, we got one more. One more. Okay. All right. I'm skipping to this last one here. All right. Um, all right here we go. All right. Uh, Khalid writes uh, from um, Saudi Arabia. Uh, hi guys. If you could go back in time and prevent a game from ever releasing, which would it be and oh why? Oh, God. Wow. It's like, he, here's the thing. Yeah. If you say like E.T. because E.T. caused the video game crash no. of the 80s or something. I don't know. Let's say it did cause the video game crash of the 80s. 
I played ET. But, I liked it. I had a great time when I was playing it. It was it was all right for Corks what it was. Also I, mean, I was a kid. Yeah, yeah, I was a kid. You know, I liked it. Yeah, yeah. when you were a kid, it was enough to be just playing a game about ET. You know, but, but it's the butterfly effect. And then, like you know, if right. the game, video yep. game industry hadn't crashed the way it did, would Mario have had the opportunity that it did to shine? Like, mm-hmm. it? I don't know. This is a dorky answer. It's like even when games are so bad, I feel like everybody takes something away from it. Like developers, like don't do that. And I almost feel like it's. It's, uh, you know. Like, you have an example? I don't know. I'm just saying, like, in series, like, you always have one entry that isn't that great. Okay. Um, and then it's like, don't don't make that mistake again. Devil May Cry like, 2. Yeah, I was yeah. thinking that was where oh, it's going. Okay. <laughs> Do you ever notice I, I just don't like to say mean done. things about anything unless it's Nino Kuni? <laughs> well, that's so great. Yeah. I'm a- to piggyback off that point, I remember doing a review of From Software. I think it was like Summoner, you know, one of the very early ones, okay. you know, when they're still very much finding their footing. Summoner wasn't them, though. Wasn't no. Is that the? I know. I, I yeah, have okay. done. I have done one of the early From Software ones, and okay. it's just okay. escaping yeah. one of the reviews. And I mean, think of Think if that game had made, and where would they be now? You yeah. know what I mean? Because I hated that game when I reviewed it. I mean, you can go back and look at whatever it is I scored it, but right. I mean, it's got to uh-huh. be sub five. I just did not like it. But yeah, where would that developer be without something like that? I'd probably go back to like honestly, like Sonic Adventure One, and just say no. Like what no to so- the what 3D about Sonic Boom? Uh, Yeah, I mean, like, cause Sonic Boom is too late. You know what I yeah, mean? Like, oh, if yeah, I can oh, go oh, back you. and kill off Sonic Adventure, even though I enjoyed it at the time, uh, maybe uh-huh. there would been this other ripple effect. Maybe that team it would have never been hired there. Right. And, but and, what if they had a gaming journalist to defend Sonic Boom then, and then you had to take it out? I was going for a Terminator Two thing. Never mind. Keep going. Keep <laughs> Turns going. out it's a complicated <laughs> plot to yeah. explain Terminator Two. Anyway, that's uh, that's all. Sonic Adventure. I'm trying to think of like the big game changers for a trend that I really don't like. It's like if Skylanders didn't happen. Or if you hated, you know, know? roguelikes, you'd just go back and off rogue at the very beginning. <laughs> There's always Oregon just, Trail, though. Yeah, that's true. There was another good question, actually, too, is like, do you like, um, should I just ask it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let me let me find this thing. This was actually a good question. I'm happy that we are we are getting to it here. Um, this is my All favorite right. part of the podcast, by the way. The yeah. reader, I love these emails. Uh, everyone's doing great, and also everyone's doing a great job saying where they're writing from. Like Tyler from Philly, I love it. Uh, hi guys. We didn't give enough credit to that Saudi Arabia guy. Like I know that. that's, that's awesome. awesome. That's fantastic. It is somebody's walking around with earbuds in Saudi Arabia. We also got Those Germany models? and Hungary and stuff wow. like that. Uh, hi guys, big fan of the new podcast. I've been playing a lot of Massive Chalice recently, and it's been making me think about two general types of strategy games and RPGs. Games like Massive Chalice and XCOM, um, Enemy Unknown, are all about trade offs and making tough decisions with limited resources. On the other hand, games like Final Fantasy Tactics give you the opportunity to optimize your characters and develop a superpowered dominant team. So I guess my question is this: Do you tend to prefer gaming experiences like Massive Chalice, where you're constantly stressed? out about surviving the next encounter month year but are extremely rewarding uh or experiences like final fantasy tactics where there are no restraints on creating a badass team but can become too easy thanks tyler i'm always in favor of consequences in yeah. games, so i would definitely be in that i XMS like game. being stressed out in video games not uh-huh. in my everyday life sure. but uh i like that challenge of just being like i gotta make sure i have all my bases covered and that t- intensity that you feel of like oh man what if i mess this up although i am a big fan of games like final fantasy tactics and i do like really building my team and kind of watching them grow as i go on but i think i'm more satisfied by the former sure i used to be a big fan of just having that really steep difficulty curve in an rpg and then just steamrolling everything yeah. it happens in every final fantasy game i've ever yeah. played uh more recently you know i like the balance of a game that has kind of tougher decisions throughout uh obviously that's the style that's in vogue right now and i think that's why i liked banner saga so much mm. because it kind of mixed both of what i like about yeah. those two things together yeah. and like oh there's consequences but you still have like you can really get your guys powered up but then you could just lose one and then have to deal with like <laughs> right. you know replacing that guy I, I i think that is to me the have the way to do it and yeah. i want to see more do that going forward me too yeah definitely well that's uh that's what we got for for the emails this week so again send in questions or funny stories or whatever uh, about falling into a hole to <laughs> podcast at gaming that's come now. i don't know why funny story is a, fu- a weird way to put it is you give me a weird look uh, yeah sure thoughts send your thoughts to podcast at gaming yeah thoughts are better your deep thoughts i think they'll just to... take about anything so just okay. send yeah. something in an email and it sounds like it's all good as long as that podcast yeah at gamer4.com is the email you send it to we will cool. read it definitely so 
Next, we're going to talk a little bit about what we expect to see at E3 and our wild, bold predictions for what's going to be at E3 2015. So stay tuned for that. All right, welcome back to the Game Informer Show. We're going to go through some predictions for E3 2015. So you guys just want to run down like the press conferences and as, use it as a way to divide up what uh, the big companies yeah. are going to be showing? Yeah, I guess we can do that. Yeah. All right, guide That's us. That's probably the way to do it. Let's go. Bethesda, Fallout 4, <laughs> yes. Doom. Yep. But what, what from Doom? I, I bet it's going to be extended Fallout gameplay, extended Doom gameplay. Right, it has I'm, to be, right? I'm okay with that. I mean, they, yeah, all those Bethesda games should get some mm-hmm. pretty good uh, gameplay demos, I'd imagine. Isn't that usually their style? Is, you know, right, yeah. right. Big question. You know, a lot to say about Fallout. Mm-hmm. Lots to say about Doom, presumably. Uh, maybe some stuff about the Elder Scrolls Online. But is it time? Yeah. W- would they ever be crazy enough to announce, like, another Elder Scrolls project? No. Uh, well, like, no. It, it, just, it, couldn't, it couldn't happen, right? <laughs> Absolutely not. So nobody. we have to kind of mix that off. Oh, then they go, they go heavier that um, Elder Fallout Scrolls 4, uh, like people would just collapse. Well, right. That's the problem. So they'll go heavier on, like, be like, all right, well, hey, we got Fallout 4, but also, if you like the Elder Scrolls mm-hmm. series, we still have Elder Scrolls Online. Please look at this. But there's, a, there's a good chance Bethesda could steal the entire show with, like, a big, presumably impressive Fallout 4 gameplay mm-hmm. demo. Whatever the hell they say about Doom, they'll talk about Battlecry, their free to play thing. <laughs> but then there's also the potential for Arcane to reveal their next game oh, sure. and the rumors. Like, we know for sure that the studio split. There's now mm-hmm. the uh, team in France, which is led by Harvey Smith, and then the team in Austin, which is led by Raph Clintonio. Uh, and they were originally together, and they made Dishonored. They split up. The rumor is that the French team is working on Dishonored 2, oh. and the Austin team is working on Prey 2, which is a, apparently being revamped as a spiritual successor to System Shock 2. Oh. So it's kind of oh, like their sci-fi take. Uh, okay. So they could also announce one of those. Mm. Both would be insane, right? right. They should probably pick a horse and back it as far as getting the press yeah. to pay attention to it or whatnot. But which would you guys like to see? I think Dishonored has more buzz going for it right now just because yeah. we came off that so hot and positive about it. Right. Uh, it was a good game. I mean, I'd like to see what they do with it. I'd like to see it com- something completely different like for the atmosphere and setting sure. than the other ones. The best part about the Dishonored world uh, we talked about it on our cover story trip, and then we posted it in our hub. And you can go take a look at it. But we have a map of the entire world instead oh, of just wow. the one city. And the coolest thing, I love this, this really stood out to me, is that there is a gigantic continent in the Dishonored world that's just like pure unexplored jungle that contains like dinosaurs and all sorts oh of God, crazy awesome. creatures. <laughs> like, I can't imagine they'd go there in the sequel. But I don't know how that would work with the gameplay they said. Yeah, no, I know. Exactly. It's like, just stealth, stealth kill a raptor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds terrible. I agree. Uh, <laughs> no, to dust. sounds like Ben Hansen's dream. It's true. That's right. Uh Kato, anything stand out? Do you want to see one or the other? I would like to see Dishonored. Um, just yeah, I really like that franchise, and uh, very curious where you know it's going to go. And it should be about time for them, you know, like I said, mm-hmm. to come out with something. Um, then again, I, I would think with the prey thing and the way that that whole situation just sort of dissolved into yeah. a lot of disappointment and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, maybe even if, let's say, they're not ready to show something or they're not ready to, you know, give any hard details, just letting people know that, like, hey, it's alive, it's well. Right. You know, just bear with us, people, I think mm-hmm. would, would be really cool to hear. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right, let's just go chronologically for the press conferences then. Microsoft is going to be Monday morning? Yeah, Monday yeah, morning. Yeah, that's the first one. Yeah, the first the first of the big three, the big classics mm-hmm. at least. Halo. So they unveiled Halo 4 with like that opening gameplay mm-hmm. demo that was like 15 That's minutes true. or so. I'd imagine they do the same thing for Halo 5. Mm-hmm. Dive right in, show some more of the campaign, maybe yeah. from Locke's perspective. Probably some Call of Duty footage. There's usually what makes yeah. its way into Microsoft's mm-hmm. press conference. That's true. That's the way it's typically run. Uh, so that could be... The question is, what do they close it with? Probably Gears. That, oh. oh, that's right. So that's, what was the name of the new st- the studio was rebranded wasn't it? Co- coagulation. It collective? No, not so. cognitive. Yeah, I don't, it's something I don't like know. that. But I'd imagine they're going to announce that really rumored, heavily rumored remaster of Gears of War One, uh, and then probably teaser trailer. You think mm-hmm. for like the next Gears? I'd be amazed if they have like a full gameplay. No, slice it's going to be like running. a teaser trailer. Yeah. it'll be like sure. the equivalent of Master Chief wearing a you know 
parka in the desert or right. whatever. Uh, probably Phil Spencer getting out there and talking about Rare making Battletoads finally, <laughs> which they could not have teased harder. Yeah. Any hardware stuff? Uh, maybe not. New peripheral? More like... I, mean, I doubt it. I mean, well, HoloLens. HoloLens, like, do you, you think yeah. that'll be They'll on stage? They'll probably do now? something with that, I would think. I bet like Casey Hudson's going to go out on stage, talk a little bit about... Okay. HoloLens, like, oh, it's a really powerful tool. Look Windows out for the 10. future. Also yeah, think. Windows 10. And then his Omni tool comes out of his arm and he <laughs> stabs a guy. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah. I also uh, think we'll see more Tomb Raider as well. Mm, that's a good point. But that's where it gets weird because Square is having their own press conference. Why and not so, like, both? How do, they do, how do they divide they up will. that weird They've done that, thing. though, for so long where they just have it like at this, both mm-hmm. at, in different different trailers. Of yeah, different right, yeah. multiplayer, single player, yeah. and the other. Phantom Dust? Is dead. You think? Uh, Mike Butter would get mad if you. I have a feeling. Yeah. yeah, there's some of those games that we've seen in previous years we don't even hear about. I wouldn't be surprised crackdown. if crackdown there's some is, of those. Yeah, Crackdown. I forgot about. Crackdown, Maybe like a right. gameplay trailer for Crackdown. Yeah, Kato, you just made me think of Crackdown, where it's just mm-hmm. like that. That was announced last year, and then mm-hmm. nothing. Something I'm really excited about for Microsoft um, is something they have briefly mentioned, and it was also a post for Jobs a while ago. But there is a European studio called Decisive Games, and they said like. Hey, we're recruiting for a well-known strategy IP from Microsoft. Come to our studio. And so the only real thing that makes sense outside of Halo Wars is Age Mind of Empire. Oh. oh, yeah, yeah. I'll oh, go to sorry. The Minesweeper MMO. Yeah. No, uh, Age of Empires. Okay. And so I pray to God that it's going to be part of their Windows 10 section where they're promoting, you know, hey, we give a crap about PC games. And they show brand new Age of Empires, Age of Empires 4, whatever the hell it is. Age of Mythology 2 would be a dream come true. My worst case scenario is they get out there and say, Age of Empires, the new hero MOBA player, third-person action game on the Xbox One. Like, that is the worst-case scenario. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. But even, like, when uh, Kudo got his promotion, he was talking about the different studios he was working with over in Europe, and he mentioned, like, yeah, Decisive Games also working with. So cool. They're up to something over there. Mm. Hopefully... Maybe we'll find out. Age of related. Nintendo? Uh, next, uh, EA. EA. Well, we better see some of the new Mass Effect. I mean, we have, right? Time. We just talked it's about it. Time. Would you want to see the new IP too? Yes, I think they need to update us on something with that. You know, obviously, like Hudson was involved with the new IP, wasn't he? Right. Yeah. Yeah, heavily. And so for him to go and leave, um, I mean, nobody knows what the state of that project is right now or anything about it. It's right. the same thing. I know they probably want to put the focus on Mass Effect, but I think it wouldn't be a bad idea to at least give people some idea. Like you say, new I- we have no idea what that means. Well, there was a tree but... in that footage they released. Yeah, so. oh yeah, that gave me so much, so also, much. Also, I just I feel like the, I want to see more single player IP from mm-hmm. them. It's been so like multiplayer focused for so long. It feels like. I mean, you say that, but I mean, the Dragon Age multiplayer was kind of a separate mode. Mass Effect Three was a separate thing enough, you know. Uh, I'm just talking about like multiple, like single player driven games. Sure. Uh, like, you know, there used to be your dead spaces and stuff like that. Even Oh, for EA, not legend. Bioware. Yeah. Okay. Yes. EA oh, okay. in That's general. Right. I'm talking about that press conference, you know. I'd love to see more dead space. I'm not going to like hang up that hat. I don't think mm-hmm. it's time yet. Well, uh, what about related to that? Uh, do you think we're going to see Amy Hennig's visceral Star Wars game? I would yes. love to. It's the right time. It is yeah. the right time. Well, you can't you can't mess with that. No. Yeah. Just at least we can get the premise of whatever the hell that's working on. Reiner mm-hmm. seems pretty convinced it's Han Solo. Uh, yeah. That'd be cool. Like a Han Solo origin mm-hmm. story that would theoretically be canon. That'd be really exciting. Just get mm-hmm. some lazy VO from Harrison Ford in there. <laughs> Perfect. Slap a Star Wars logo on it. Cool. Up oh, Battlefront footage. Obviously, well, is going to be yeah. there. Super excited to see that in action. Cool. Um, uh, after that, Ubisoft. The mm-hmm. new Assassin's Creed, obviously. Yep. The Division. We're going to see some more of that. They always they have that template of like the big stinger on the end. Of, like this is our new IP. So. Watch Dogs too, I think. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. They said mm. they're still going forward with the series, so I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, just with how fast they've spit out, <laughs> I you know their properties, it wouldn't surprise yeah. me if now they're like, oh yeah, we're this is in development. Probably another sort of pre-scripted Rainbow Six Siege. Yep. Uh, oh sure, yeah. which it, it, that game's actually looking pretty cool. Yeah, um, Aisha Tyler's going to host it again. So yeah, she does like a pretty She's good, good job. She's yeah. good. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Uh, is it time for another? Like Splinter Cell or Rayman, Do, can you see that I those making an appearance? I love the new Rayman games. I don't want them to it's, make another it's one. It's too too fast. Here's also yeah. what I'm gonna say: Beyond Good and Evil Two, I'm gonna hope again. Mm. I'm gonna always hope. I'm gonna always hope. Maybe, but especially with it's not gonna happen. But I just need to put out there that I want it still so. And maybe we'll bad. see Michelle Ancel 
on Sony's stage yeah, because he was working at both studios. Yeah. And he's also working uh, on that weird Tales of the Sun like caveman game yep. uh, for Sony. Is it called Before? No, that's the other one. Is it called Wild? AD? Yeah, it is called Wild, Wild or BC. Yeah. yeah, so I'm really curious what that's like. Mm-hmm. But that leads us to Sony. What do you guys want to see from Sony? Uh, uh, the Last indies. Guardian. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone all at once. Ready? The Three, l- two, one. <laughs> Media Molecules Guardian. game. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. No, Last Guardian. You think now it's time? I hope so. If it's, they don't, I, I mean, mean... We've been saying for the last like four or five years, And right? they've been the, quiet about it for just long enough where like this can be the good haymaker at that press conference. This oh can be God. the like, yeah. yeah, we're going to stand up and cheer and be like, finally. Right. right. Yeah. We need it. Yeah, um, but I was going to say, I want to see more of the indies. I mean, Sony's been so great at supporting a lot of those sure. games and doing a lot of interesting yeah. things. There's always some good ex- surprises there. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, Shu Yoshi, Shu Yoshida announced that there is a Bloodborne expansion, yeah. just that it exists. And I think that there's so much goodwill surrounding mm-hmm. Bloodborne that them saying, like announcing something about this expansion, they're calling it an expansion, not DLC. Yet. I love that. Yeah. Uh, it feels a little more substantial. Mm-hmm. So I look forward to something from that. Uh probably going to open with like a big uncharted demo kind of like they did at psx yep. and, uh something like that i mean the psx demo the way that that team at naughty dog described it was like that was the meat and potatoes mm-hmm. and so like this is the time the e3 before the release like this is going to be the Story. spectacle moment like uncharted 3 it was like that sinking ship mm-hmm. uncharted 2 is the collapsing building oh yeah like there's going to be some crazy set piece thing yeah happening with uncharted 4 it would certainly it's gonna make you think a character is going to die or something yeah <laughs> uh fan favorite for this podcast David Cage's next game. Will we get a tease? I think, you know, we should. I mean, time <laughs> has passed to uh, yeah. kind of make people forget a little bit about Beyond Two Souls. I haven't he, forgotten. He did seem a little, you know, sort of personally butthurt about, you know, uh, about Heavy Rain and how that... Well, he had that tweet where he said, I'm personally I'm, butthurt. I'm sorry, uh, how uh, Beyond Two Souls, uh, how that was sort of received. So I, right. I wouldn't be surprised, actually, if he lays low, lays low for a little bit. I was Could thinking be. the same thing, yeah. At least maybe announce his game, but... I don't know, maybe was Beyond Two Souls so damaging that like having him up on stage wouldn't be like the big like look at this guy well, think moment about anymore? Half of the equation in, with those Quantic Dreams games is they're always like amazing looking whenever mm-hmm. they show mm-hmm. them. And that's not as much of a concern anymore. Like games look really, really good across mm-hmm. the board sure. almost. And I just don't know if that part of the appeal of those games is right. really there. Hey, Tim, you listen to the 8-4 Play podcast. Yeah. Uh, it's another video game podcast out of Japan. It's like show. some localizers over there. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a really good show. One of my favorites. Um, on the last episode, they had a very cryptic tease where they talked about uh, Dragon Quest. Hmm. And they're like, maybe you'll see more at the Sony press conference. There's some connection there to E3. So I don't know if it's an announcement of Dragon uh, Quest 10 or little coming big to... planet skins, little <laughs> something <outfits. laughs> like that. I don't know. Maybe something yeah. beyond Dragon Quest Heroes sure coming. That's my weird oddball prediction. Also, I'm going to swing for the fences here. I predict JJ Abrams on stage, Sony press conference to show Force Awakens Disney Infinity stuff. Oh, like cool. alongside like C3PO or some crap. Uh why Sony's stage? Because they partnered with them last year. Did they? Uh, okay. For like the big Hulk exclusive. Oh, all right. Yeah. Um, also, I will predict Sony reviving uh, PT for Morpheus support. That'll be my other weird, bold prediction. My God. That's bold. That's super bold and not going to happen. They're so smart with staying in touch with the internet, though, over there at Sony. Like, maybe the higher ups, not so much. But everybody else, they clearly saw the fan outrage over that thing being taken down. And something, when they're trying to promote morpheus any way they can like having the ultimate terror experience i think that konami is in such disarray yeah. or reshuffling and stuff maybe that's disingenuous but like uh, or doing them a disservice but i just don't think that they probably would have been in any position to organize a deal that fast yeah and lock yeah. something in all the ser- all the, the rumors circulating around pt in the future of the silent hill franchise yeah. i just don't think any could mo- anything could mobilize while yeah. they are in the midst of restructuring things yeah, the only thing i can mobilize is konami's mobile division right? that's right god it's yeah. the future all right so moving on to square the next morning then uh squaresoft's press conference do you think kingdom hearts 3 is going to be there kim how was it two years ago they, yeah, yeah i mean I have a feeling uh, Disney has an event every year, and I think that's when they're going to do more. D23? Yeah, D23. And I think that's when they're going to do more with Kingdom Hearts 3. I mean, what I think is going to happen is that they're going to say that Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 are going to come to PS4. Uh, yeah, PS4, like re- oh, the remasters. Like the just yeah, I would not be surprised if that's next. Um, and 
I think definitely this is Final Fantasy 15's year, I feel like. Yeah. They're going really hard with that. So I would think that a lot would be devoted to that, especially since we just got the next phase of the demo out for that. Oh, sure, well. 2.0. Yeah, 2.0. Episode yeah, 2. Dusk yeah 2. I guess they made a lot of changes, so I oh, actually am going to go home and take a look at it. But um, I honestly, I want it so bad because yeah. I feel like the last time we actually did see anything was at that D23 event with the attractions trailer for Kingdom Hearts 3. Right, right. And it's like, uh, please give me something. <laughs> See, I'm shaking now. This is this is too much. Yeah, Kato is a little verklempt over here. <laughs> He's just too excited. Uh, I think Deus Ex is oh, obviously yeah. Deus Ex will be, be a yeah, big yeah, focus. Yeah. Um, they also... Uh, just Cause 3. Yeah, well, that's true. They also announced um, this week, I think it might be free to play, but something called Figureheads which is like some sort of online tactics mech game. It looks a little front mission-y. Uh, it, it looks interesting, so I can see yeah. them pushing big in the free-to-play space with something like that. Hmm. Um, okay, right after Square, immediately after Square, Nintendo's press conference where they press play and then walk more away. More Amiibo! <laughs> it's just a glorified Direct. It's a glorified Direct. Yeah, What do you, so more Amiibo crap. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Got no, it. no Zelda. We know there's no Zelda. I, it, unless they're lying. But unless I, I could, I don't know. I think we're gonna have a trailer. I mean, I think they meant like no Zelda at the show. But I have a feeling some type of new trailer is gonna surface. So you think there'll be something about Zelda. something? I okay. mean, you can't go mm -hmm. through a, a press conference at E3 without something. Zelda. Whoa, during this production thing. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Tim. We we glazed past uh, hardware with Sony. Is oh, there do you want more Morpheus stuff or? We'll talk about Morpheus. Okay, It'll definitely be there. All right. Yeah. Okay, and then zzz, going back I, to Nintendo. Nintendo. Speaking of that, Nintendo needs to do a Wii U dry, a price drop. Price drop bundle. redesign or yeah. just price drop? I would just give it a freaking price drop already. Yeah. Like that's. A, I think they probably will try to do some type of bundle if they can. Sure. Um, but an amiibo it's, it's, bundle maybe. Yeah. Like, that would actually sell. See, put box. all the amiibos get that it. people can't find into that bundle, like the hard to get uh, ones, and they'd sell off the shelves. Make a custom amiibo that's sold only with a Wii. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you go. Holy Not hell. the worst idea. You know, honestly. Yeah, the most honest insidious. To God. But yeah, you're um, gonna see a lot of a uh, Wii U boxes at you know. Where, like retailers with mm -hmm. just claw marks dug into them and rip the amiibo off. I feel heart. like we should be conservative with Nintendo. Every year, the predictions for Nintendo are just so outlandish. Like I remember Reiner last year. He we put a bet down. He shook my hand on this that he was convinced that we were going to see the next generation hardware from Nintendo last year. Like there's no way we're not even going to yeah. get a hint of NX here. Nope. This is all going to be pretty conservative Wii U plays Wait, and did, 3DS. Did he pay up? Yeah, he did. It was what just was for it? a drink. Uh, so oh. he bought me a drink. Here's yeah, what's up. big, man. Uh, yeah. They, so they still have retro. They have retro, and they haven't had a Metroid game for I think. A while. Here's my prediction. Oh, here we and go. And they've been doing a lot of 2D games. But wait, wait. So if you're not going to talk about NX, though, I mean, do you really think they're going to put them on some project that's going to come out on the dying no. death so, rattle of the So you? what you're saying is that like, yeah, nothing substantial besides the zelda that's announced is coming out on wii u i bet it's just like all i bet yoshi's woolly world yoshi's woolly world all that stuff mario maker will be a big push another kirby game maybe I, it's, uh, that'd be whatever i don't know quiet, it's fine you know, they're fine uh xenoblade chronicles yeah they're gonna push that get a release date i bet animal crossing next spring for wii u I bet yep. that. i think they will yeah that seems... it's crazy that we haven't had animal crossing I... and they're trying to do their like last push with the wii right. that would be a their clothes out i don't see how animal crossing would ever go back to con i don't see why it'd ever go back to console it's so great point. on 3ds but i don't think they know that yet i think uh, it'll go and mm -hmm. it'll be another city folk yeah. on the end of the mm -hmm. wii u's life mm -hmm. i also think speaking of metroid i bet retro isn't working on it my prediction would be next level games the luigi's mansion team they just knocked it out of the park so well with luigi's mansion yeah the concept art was released or leaked that showed that some artists at Next Level before Luigi's Mansion were working on a Metroid game. Mm. So maybe after they nailed Luigi's Mansion so much, my prediction is some form of Metroid from Next mm -hmm. Level games on 3DS. Okay. What about uh, a 3D Mario? What about any Mario game? Mario Maker, man. I think that's going to be on. it. I, I bet it's going to be that. I'm excited for that, but it's not Odd, the same. The excitement. only thing I could see him doing is like uh, Super Mario 3D World 2. Mm -hmm. Just I'd reuse be, those so assets and yeah. that engine again. Yeah, like the same way they did Mario Galaxy 2, where it's like, remember when they first announced that? It's like, yeah, we had some scrap levels from the first one. I guess we'll make a sequel. Yeah. And it turned out to be such an incredible game. Right. <laughs> I mean, they just, even though they've kind of done that with 3D Land to 3D World already, like there's still so many things you can do mm -hmm. with that structure. Like, why not? Didn't, um, oh, 
Wasn't there those project games that they were working on that you saw last week? Star Fox? Oh, oh, Star Fox. Yeah. Yeah. And it seemed like there was these kind of mini games, um, one where you control a giant robot, one where you juggle different security Mm -hmm. cam feeds to fend off invading robots. And there was like Star Fox logos hidden within that. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I asked, because Miyamoto was directing this brief q and I'm like, are these... You know, and Star Fox didn't seem that substantial either. It didn't seem really fleshed out, mm-hmm. uh, but it was it was early. Um, and I asked if it was all going to be bundled together under one umbrella of just kind of like Star Fox themed games. And he was being kind of coy about it, but it seemed like it didn't seem terribly unlikely. I just, I don't know if this is going to be the Star Fox game that Star Fox fans want. I don't know if they could make the Star Fox game. Do you think they're going to take those mini games and make them like, okay, this level is all just the weird tower defense thing and this level is like the <laughs> fighting robot thing. I think like, think about Nintendo Land or WarioWare or something right. like that with one one campaign that's like a lighter version of a Star Fox game. Also, that development time for Star Fox seems so rushed. I'm not the most optimistic about it either. Yeah, do you think we'll see something? I think they're going to show yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. Sh- they have to show it at least. They need to make a big splash that plays hard on nostalgia and stuff like that like voice acted weird mm-hmm. cutscene things like to get the barrel rolls in there like they need to pull out all the stops i think to to really like make this game seem like it's gonna make a splash because right just keep looping the barrel thing that's I think right that's the splash we need because also the, the gameplay i saw again yeah it's yeah. got me ca- uh, cautious sure yeah um they haven't announced the pokemon game for this year i could oh. see him talking about the mm. next pokemon 3ds game I would pray that they wouldn't and more, then save it for some sort of NX thing, but... It'll definitely be more Fire Emblem focus. Yeah, the Fire Emblem games. if thing. If yeah. and um, Fire Emblem... Shin Megami Tensei right. X Fire Emblem. And I know the team is working on a Rhythm Heaven for 3DS, but my fingers are crossed for some sort of proper WarioWare game for Wii U, mm-hmm. but I think that's where I'm stepping outside the realm of possibility <laughs> and dreaming too much. Monster Hunter X, what is that coming out for? Do you, I don't uh, know anything about that. that one. Yeah new monster hunter game was announced it seemed like it's a little bit more action focused oh that's right not mainline monster hunter as much it seems sure um, so uh, the series traditionally comes out for the 3ds but yeah i'm not sure if this one was different so caught a scale of one to ten how much are you looking for d3 um i would say probably an eight did you go last, was last year a year you stayed back i stayed back the past two Helped years out actually home. Yeah. yeah so it's um, been a while some built up anticipation right a little bit yeah but you know like kim said you know when you're you know back looking at the press conferences and getting the uh the rush of those you know which is everybody sees you, yeah you definitely get a flavor of it but uh yeah i think about an eight i think you know we've we've talked about a lot of things that will probably happen you know whether it be like dishonored and getting to see fallout and um you know hopefully last guardian um i think that there's going to be enough stuff here that's going to be going to be well worth attending yeah sweet Cool. Well, definitely stay tuned to Game Informer throughout next week. We're all going to be over there and also back here in Minneapolis, uh, sweating profusely to produce content for you guys. Uh, oh, so, hey well, I all didn't of a sudden, natural. There. We, we're going to glow naturally. <laughs> uh, so, we're going to be producing, obviously, E3 Show Floor Tour. Uh, the video that we do every year. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Tim, I think you're helping out with this year. Yeah. Cool. Let's go check it out. And yeah, definitely. We're going to try our damnedest to get a podcast from E3. There will be a podcast. Yeah. The plan now is to do a video podcast uh, as well. So the actual format of that, we're not entirely locked down, but we will be recording from out there. So yeah. look forward to the show next Thursday. Mm-hmm. Um, tons of articles, as many videos as I can single-handedly produce out there. <laughs> and, and Live streams at GameInformer.com. And be sure to check back on the uh, on, on the website because the front page will change a little bit yep. we're going to get a way to show you the the coolest like most relevant e3 focused videos whether mm-hmm. it's our content or big right. trailers and stuff like that should all be at the top of the website so you can kind of just come and get a right. quick kind of rundown on what's going on yeah so yeah, i'm excited it's and ga- it's gaming christmas man yeah this absolutely. is the time of the year it's it's you're right this is it this is this is the mecca the mecca the mecca All right. Well, thank you so much for listening or watching to the Game Informer show. Uh, Be sure to tune in next week when we will have more than enough to talk about. Until next time, we'll see ya.